Hey everybody, welcome back to Pixel Hello. Junkies. Uh, this is the Pixel Junkies podcast, episode 118. Take two. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Rory DC. I'm a YouTube creator. We t- we take a week <laughs> off and we get we get. Well, I get rusty, so yeah, yeah. Uh, so so can, I just, can, I, can I just say before we start anything else, we should be back to regular schedule for now because yes. no more vacations. No more vacations yeah. between the two primary uh, members yeah. of this channel. Yes. Yeah. They uh, uh. So I I. I said in the first take that Aaron, we weren't going to uh, talk about Wonder Woman because we don't have time. In the video. But, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Adam wants to talk about Wonder Woman. So I'll say... Well, <laughs> well first off, we should probably say again that we're, what we're doing is we're watching the E3 conference. Yes, it, this is the E3 big show. old E3 episode. And we're really doing a big E3 episode, but... and I. Yeah, so well, let's derail it and talk about Wonder Woman. So yeah, briefly, I'll give you I'll give you a minute, Rory. A minute to talk about it, a minute for me to talk about okay, it. Okay, so I should go first because I didn't like it. <laughs> I'll give you a minute, Rory. Screw you, Rory. I'm going to talk about Wonder Woman. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I mean, me and my friend Sandy, our friend Sandy, went to see mm-hmm. it together, and you and uh, you Caroline, Caroline, went yeah, to see it, which is good because she's a big, she's a one, uh, fan of the Wonder Woman comics. Yeah. So I was like, oh, cool, this will so be, I get the perspective. Yeah, and uh, I really, I'm really big fan of Wonder Woman. She might be one of, like she's my second favorite DC character. It's I'm assuming Batman is your no. favorite? Uh, Superman? No. The Green Lantern? No. Blue Beetle. Blue really Beetle? Like, really okay. Like Blue Beetle. Good choice. Anyway. Oh my god, EA. I missed yeah. this part of the conference. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I got my jam on. Also, uh, I'd, I'd make it full screen, but when I do, the, the, the symbol goes away, so I don't know if it's like, if it's fucking with the capture, so I'll just leave it like this. All right. They actually deflated that drum a little bit. That's not a regulation drum. <laughs> anyway, uh, I thought that the movie was okay. The best of the DC movies so far. Tom Brady, that uh, you? The DCEU movies so yeah. far, I think you... Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. Um, I thought that Gal Gadot did an amazing job as Wonder Woman. Is it Gadot, Rory? It's Gadot, yes. Okay. I thought that the plot of the movie was a little bit flawed and a little bit derivative of the first Captain America movie. A little bit. It was very similar to that. Yeah, it's uh, gonna be like. Is is it? I don't know anything about the the, the DU the, the DC DC yeah. DC extended universe extended now. Yes. All right. I don't know anything about the Duik, but like, is it Wonder Woman always in phonetic school of pronunciation? <laughs> is is Wonder Woman always in no like that time period? No, she's in modern time period. So why did they pick that for the know. movie? I don't know. Okay. It could have the been, World War One setting does work well, actually. Yeah, but it, what would have worked better was the World War Two setting because the two people, the, the two villains of the piece, are, are Nazis, except they're in World War One when Nazis did not exist. But they're not Nazis. No, they're not Nazis, <laughs> but they just. It's clarified. Like it wasn't like they like made went out to make a World War One movie, but thought Nazis were in World War One or here's something how like Nazi they like are. That. They take a gas grenade and throw it into a bunker full of people and close the door and gas them. That's how much Nazi they are, and then they giggle about it. Like, they literally have, like, like why did you throw them in a gas mask? Like, because they will be fighting for it, but they will do no good. <laughs> I, I was going to say spoiler, was. but it's not really essential. They, uh, uh, so are they, like, trying to set up, like, an MCU thing where, like, Wonder Woman is the main character now? You know, like... Let's Maybe. let's let's be super progressive and have a woman like be that, at the Wonder forefront. I like that because Wonder Woman's awesome. And I will say the movie. I would also like that. Get her character. She smiles in this like a lot, and Gal Gadot smiles. That was infectious. so. That was the exact same thing that Caroline said to me. She said if if uh, the thing she liked most about it was that they she thought they nailed the character. Yeah, I, the, I've heard the, I've heard the same thing, but it's like. To me, like yeah, okay, you can smile and stuff, but in a in a superhero movie, in like a. In like a, I guess a war torn setting, it just seems kind of like, like cheesy. You Did know? you see Iron Man? Yeah, that dude treats war torn settings like a comedy routine. Yeah, but he's not, you like, know, look like at my jokes. He doesn't do like, <laughs> like the, the like the the upturn like, like yeah. I don't nice know. Gal Gadot impersonation there. I don't know. It's just it's just like a weird kind of like. It's, at least from the trailer, it seems like kind of a gratuitous smile. Also, I didn't like the whole like fish out of water aspect of the first one because I feel like that's been done with like a thousand other films. It was like, oh, like ice cream. What is this? It's like, is it actually iced cream? Like, yes. I actually <laughs> like that in this. I I know what you mean. Like, it's kind of like it's 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 a a a, a proper trope. Yeah. But like, it's I I don't know. Like I she was I think. With another actress, it would have been really difficult. But I thought she was convincing enough. So is she to pull... not human? What? Is she not human? She is. She's just from a mystical island. That is where? 
like why hasn't America bombed it already? Okay, so you, you, it's under a veil. Okay. Come on, you saw Lost. You know what that's about. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's like you got to teleport there or something, right? Is that what you mean? Like, or you can just walk into it. But, but it's like, invisible. Yeah, it's invisible. It's a it's a it's a like a proper mystical veil. Like so, is it not, like in the Bermuda Triangle? Did they like play on that at all? You might want to mute my mic there, by the way. Yeah, probably. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> so is it like where is it? Is it I don't. It's in the Mediterranean. Like, yeah, it's somewhere in the okay. Mediterranean. Yeah. Because I feel like you know the the. The Bermuda Triangle, they could do something with that. Oh, right, like it's like, Mediterranean, yeah. Oh, Mediterranean. oh man, it, it's, Aaron, there's something here. It's the Mediterranean. Okay. Um, and uh, I, Wonder Woman's main thing is love and understanding. Like, that's I agree her, with that, yeah. That's her whole character. Like, Superman is, like, truth and justice. Mm. Batman is t- t- justice. And Wonder Woman's is love and friendship and just, you know, that kind of, and, and acceptance. And they nailed that in the movie with her character, but I felt that the plot of the movie should have revolved around that, and it did, but in a stupid way, because they so were... So this is where we depart on our opinion of the movie, and I think this was... So just to, like, do a little net thing here, you liked the movie, I loved the movie. Is yeah. that fair? We're both positive about yeah. the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would now, say see it, it's a good movie, good now, action. Uh, so carry on. Is it... So the only thing, like, so, like, Wonder Woman is, like, throughout the movie, like, it's, it's in World War One. you know, terrible, terrible conflict, and uh, what, I'm trying not to spoil it, but she's trying to end World War One peacefully. Like, so there's like no more killing. Mm. Um, so uh, she goes through, and she's like, you know, at the end of the movie, the the main theme is like love conquers warfare, but it's the love between her and some other dude. Like, the, like she loves him, and I'm not saying that that romance was handled wrong. But what I, in my opinion, that the movie should have been, it should have been everywhere Wonder Woman went. You know, she obviously has some fight scenes, because it'd be hard to have a superhero movie with no fight scenes. But, like, she brings out, like, love and understanding. So, like, when she, like, ha- like or you could have this, like, have the Germans be mind-controlled, and that's why, or, like, the soldiers on both sides being mind-controlled. She fights them, gets rid of the mind-control, and then she's like, no, look, you are you don't have to fight each other. You're basically the same people, you know, just fighting different sides of a needless war. And then, like, they start to understand and, you know, love each other. And that's what stops the conflict, you know, the little battle going on in this area. And wherever she goes, she brings that love and understanding. That's what stops the wars. People just understanding and loving each other as opposed to a romantic love. Okay, so it, it, here's... Okay, so I'm, I'm glad... So we now your about, minute, Rory. I'm glad we're talking about the semantics of this a little bit because this is important. So what? you know I have sort of reverse... What, what is that? What? Uh... Okay, we're gonna ignore that for a moment. Uh, That's uh, the Battlefield One DLC. Sweet. Um, uh, so Look we're at those graphics. Uh, so it, I'm glad we're talking about the semantics of this because you and I had sort of, I think, uh, different interpretations of the same detail. So yes, there is the the romantic detail between her and Chris Pine's character. Chris Pine does a good job yeah, as well in the movie. Yeah. I saw something online that was like, "Man, Chris Pine really carried this movie." I'm like, "Nah, man." No, <laughs> Wrong again, Bob. Gal Gadot carried this movie. <laughs> uh, Gal Gadot. I, I, I want to point that out. Though, like, Gal Gadot is absolutely fantastic in the movie. Wonder she's Woman great. is by far the best character. I've in this also movie. thought she she's historically an underappreciated actor. Oh, yeah. She's great in everything. Yeah. Um, she and brings Wonder Woman is an underrated is an underappreciated character. I agree with that. And Gal Gadot even brought care, uh, gravity to that character in the Fast and the Furious. I yeah. mean, that was that was actually well done. That movie wasn't good, but um, uh, so uh, yeah. So I think I agree with you. There was definitely that like romantic line, but I think it was that. W- so you're saying basically you would have rather it been like instead of a romantic love, more of like a broad speaking sort of general love for humanity in general, right? Is that? Is that an accurate interpretation? Yes. Right. So I think it's. I think that is what happened. But I think it's the romantic love that like inspired that in her. I think for this Wonder Woman, and by this Wonder Woman, I mean the first movie in a series, since this is her first experience in sort of the world of humans, she needed that experience to sort of alert her to like the general love of humanity and what it actually meant to love humanity. And I think hopefully we'll see more of that that you want in, like, the next Wonder Woman. Hopefully. I see this as, like, her learning, and then in the next movie, once she's perfected it, I would, I agree, I want to see her end something a little more... Yeah. ...sort of broadly, generally... And less tropey. Uh, and maybe a little less tropey, but though I think tropes work really well in origin stories. I, uh, yeah. Um, I will say, my favorite Wonder Woman comic ever is the one that came out of the new 52, which was bloody brilliant. Uh, and basically in that Wonder Woman is portrayed as a very reluctant warrior. Like she's the best fighter on the planet and she is, 
Like, no, I'd like e- even if Batman was as powerful as her, I think mm. Wonder Woman would still win. She's just a better fighter. Sure. Um, and um, but in this, she's she's trained in this comic, which you should absolutely pick up. It's called uh, uh, Iron and Blood, I believe. Um, is the name of like the arc? She's trained from a like her mom doesn't want her to be trained. Um, you know, um, Hippolyta, but she is eventually trained in warfare by Ares, the, you know, the god of war. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she doesn't realize who she is until later, and then when she realizes what he is, she kind of, like, backs off, like, no, I don't like war. Like, I, I like I like fighting. Fighting is fine. But I don't like to kill people. And he's like, no, you need to kill people because I'm training you to... Second. I'm gonna just check this capture and see if the full screen works, and then I'll restart it. So... Pause this for a second, Adam. We'll keep talking about whatever it was. Okay. And then we'll come back to this. Yep. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, lost my train of thought. Uh, so yeah, yeah. She didn't want to, uh, uh, she wasn't into war, Ares was into war, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Anyway, the whole comic's about her, like there's a prophecy, like Zeus disappears and there's a prophecy mm-hmm. and like the Olympians are fighting amongst each other and she has to try and save this girl who has given birth to Zeus's last child and all the gods want to kill the child for various reasons and that sort of thing. And I won't spoil how the comic ends, uh, but it, it's it's very well written and what it does to woman, like it, it's a really accurate representation of Wonder mm-hmm. Woman's character where it's like, she's the best fighter on the planet, she doesn't like to fight, she likes to talk, exhaust every other option before fighting. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, that could have been used a little bit more in this movie, but that's just me. You know, that's sure. Yeah. So, regardless, we we definitely, although we have different levels of positive interpretation of the movie, we definitely both recommend yeah. that you see Wonder Woman. Also, a lot of like needless characters. I disagree. In this case, we see th- there's there's some sort of line. There's some sort of like Edge of Tomorrow line. Uh, we're like, uh, <laughs> we're like just just like at the level of Edge of Tomorrow that become needless. And I felt that they had. Just enough extra to be not needed, but allowable. I suppose if that makes sense. I'm not gonna say they were vital. Yeah, no, they were definitely they were not, not vital. Um, you could have taken them out of the movie, and nothing would have to change in the in the movie. Like not very much would have to change. Because like you know the sniper dude Twombly from uh, he played yes, Twombly yeah. in uh, in Black Hawk Down. He has that freak out moment. And like oh why you know he's like PTSD. I was like oh okay. And I was like oh there's gonna be like a big PTSD thing in the movie that's pretty cool never brought up again i'm like oh, no, okay it's a good thing you true. brought that up though i do think it's good for her i think that was a learning experience for her more than it was for us maybe but it didn't have to mean a central character like when you make it one of the main characters have that issue it makes it makes it seem like the character that that's going to be a more important issue when it comes to like that sort right of, i know what you're saying you're saying it, it was kind of like a red herring yeah but it could have mm-hmm. been more like it could have just been like she's walking and one of the soldiers from the battle she just participated in is freaking out she's like mm-hmm. what's going on with this man she's like oh ptsd or uh, i forget what they called it back in the first world war it was not ptsd it was like mm-hmm. cowardice i believe <laughs> sure yeah is what they call it but yeah um Anyway, yeah, we should so, probably wrap we'll, up. We'll definitely be talking about wonder woman again because i can almost guarantee that it's going to make my top 10 list by the end of the year because the all right, so, all right, E3. Yep, yep. so uh, 16 minutes later. Yes, uh, yeah. 16 minutes later. Well, to be later. fair, <laughs> we had to restart halfway through the first time, so. <laughs> yeah, well, that was that was only two minutes. All right, yeah, 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 14 minutes later. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're actually going to talk about E3 because we were watching E3 this past little while. Um, yes. And uh, Aaron, you caught up on a lot of the stuff because Aaron was away for some of the time. Yeah, I watched all the press conferences mine is EA oh, because... Uh, mm-hmm. Generally, their press conferences consist of like 45 minutes of sports crap no one cares about, and then like maybe one or two games. So I just watched the interesting trailers. Right, yeah. So and, uh, we have a couple things. I guess Anthem. Yeah, Anthem got like a short teaser at, at the EA conference. And then, uh, so I guess we could just pull up the Anthem teaser, maybe. Mm-hmm. By the way, Aaron, at the end of this uh, podcast, I want to devote a little bit of time to talk about this E3 show itself. Uh, By the way, you should all watch Anthem. Camp Camp Season 2, Episode 1. is really good. Tra- what are you on about? What is that? Camp Teaser. Camp is Rooster Teeth's animated show, besides Red vs. Blue and Ruby. Uh, that's really good. <laughs> so it's one of their anime, right? Yeah. yeah. It's really good. It's like, a, it's like a comedy, but it's really fu- It's actually genuinely funny. What mm. is it? Camp Camp. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I haven't bothered watching that. It's good. So here's Anthem. This is the Anthem teaser? Yeah, this, this is like is the, the teaser, abbreviated yeah. uh, coverage Which, of Anthem, yeah, it, I guess it, we'll call it. I, yeah. I saw this, and I was like, this looks interesting. I'd like to see some gameplay. And then they showed oh, and then some you saw gameplay, the gameplay yeah. at the Microsoft conference. So, Yeah, there was an interesting... There's a bit of an interesting, like, sort of... Um, Divide in the uh, group. 
about that. Oh, well, there's that. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was just an interesting sort of, and we'll be talking about this later, just organizational structure with what got shown at what show, which I thought was interesting. This um, E3 yeah. was like a fucking train wreck. I hate <laughs> yeah. it. Terrible E3. So, yeah, there was, but there was definitely a divide in the group about Anthem. Which I think was kind of expected because it, it's sort of almost I identical. Mean, Andrew to the, exists. Uh, well, it's identical to the divide about Destiny, basically. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Anthem just because we're watching it right now. Anthem, mm-hmm. just a quick overview. Anthem is a looks to be a third person shooter. Um, With story first driven. person elements. For some reason. For some reason. Yeah. So you're seeing first person elements here. I don't know if this is just a cutscene in the game though. I don't um, know why walking around a village though would be. A cutscene, you know okay, I mean? Yeah, I, I, like, again, I don't know. It takes place in this kind of, like, post-apocalyptic future. You play as a not-guardian from Destiny. I guess maybe a, maybe it's kind of like the Ranger inverse of Destiny. Because in Destiny, it's third person in the hub, but first person in the actual game. Yeah. So maybe it's like a reverse. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, um, it's... Um, uh, you play as a freelancer, I believe is what they're called. Uh, and you get in these, like, giant Iron Man power suits... And you go out outside of the wall, like humanity lives behind this wall, like Attack on Titan, or Destiny, or and there's another one that's like that. But anyway, uh, this yeah. game, it's um, got some like Warframe sort of Destiny vibes to it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you go outside of the wall and you fight monsters. I don't know if there's any like enemies, factions, or anything like that. But there, you fight you you fight monsters. And there's, like, weird weather and shit out there. There's the suits that you can see. And that's basically all they show. But it looks to be multiplayer, at least partly. There's definitely looks to be a co-op element at the yeah. very least. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they'll add PvP and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it looked like it was a very, like, at least, like, four-player co-op experience. So, that, it's kind of interesting. I, I don't it's know. hard to get in that with boots. It's, uh... Yeah, really, though. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason, this... Like strikes my interest where games like Warframe and Destiny don't get it for PS4 and so we can play together. For what? Fuck. Get it for PS4 so we can play together. Oh, for this? fuck's sakes, yeah. Hey, well, are you getting Anthem? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I could probably do that. But uh, I guess the thing is, like, it reminds me. It's got some like nostalgic vibes. There was an old like robot fighting game on DOS back in the day, and it kind of wow. It kind of had like that sort of like style, at least like. The style of whatever these things are called, the suits, they kind of get, they kind of have that sort of like angular, like look to them. Reminds me of Killzone. Yeah, Killzone ish. Uh, there's a particular, I forget what the name of it, but I believe there's a name for that kind of very angular futuristic. So, so it reminds me a lot of um, a lot of uh, Hideo Kojima's character design when it comes to yeah. the enemies and bad guys, especially the later Metal Gear Solid games, like mm-hmm. the ones that take place chronologically later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. You mean like four or five? Is yeah. yeah, yeah. Like this, well, not five, but like. Well, no, no. Actually, yeah, five is one, particularly one, two, and four. Really. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah where I it have... had like very angular kind of like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you can see she's flying. I, don't I like know if that it's like void of load screens as well. Like she just jumped off the platform and now is mm-hmm. in the game world. It's void of load screens so far. Yeah, from at least from this evident bit, it doesn't like show you flying a spaceship that you don't actually get to fly for ten minutes and then you get to play the level. Yeah, she like yeah. Um, the, the, I guess the thing the thing about this game that entices me. I know it's a game that's designed to be like grindy and you know we'll probably have microtransactions because of the A. Um, but for the most part, I think what entices me is. Like I, I guess you know my my style of game now is like long term. Give me a long term goal to work towards, mm-hmm. and like modifying these suits that like they have visual upgrades and visual like changes as you unlock more things and customize them. Like that, I guess that one small element to me is enough to be like, okay, I'm I'm interested in this now, or I can like modify the suit and make it as good as it can possibly be. And I know you can do that in other games as well. Like in Destiny, you can make your character, you can level up and stuff. But a lot of that is just like perk trees, where it's like you have a thing now that you click the box on, and in Warframe you can. You There's know, not even perk trees because you get the whole thing at at the end. You can just switch them out. Yeah, and and, you, and more frame you get like like prime frames and stuff, and it's like, you know, whatever. I kind of want to stupid name mix and match and what prime frames. You get prime like, frames you get, and you a like beta something frame. something prime like Necros Prime or oh. So I don't know what it is, and, and and in that it's like it seems like it's a lot more. I mean, maybe this will be the same. I don't know, but Oops. in that it's like entirely RNG where you do a specific level. 
to have a chance at getting a specific part that you can then get to like upgrade another thing to build another it's like it almost seems like it's a rabbit hole in warframe and i guess maybe that's why i don't like it because it's like yeah. i'm gonna play this for nine million hours and get nowhere now, to be fair, like I am intrigued by the by the idea of like what this game is like, a, like a like a, a evolving open like sprawling open world that you can go out and explore, and like a really big one you can fly around and lots of freedom of movement that kind of thing. I'm all for that. I just Destiny's made me skeptical, and I like Destiny, but like I also don't want to be like I don't want to get my hopes up for a game yeah. that's you know gonna be something that it isn't. So yeah. I'll hold off until I see more gameplay footage and they yeah. explain more about it because this isn't coming out for a while so that looks that's cool i like i like cluster yeah. rockets yeah it's and that's and that's fair i think my main drawback with destiny because it doesn't have those long-term progression goals at least ones that interest me because it's all entirely rng based and i like rng doesn't involve skill or any specific amount of time somebody could play the game for two minutes and get you know something i worked my entire gameplay yeah, and misapplied get. rng can genuinely ruin a game experience yeah so that like to me it's like all right well i don't like this i don't like that where's where's the story give me a deep narrative i can get involved in with maybe rpg elements and sort of that and destiny doesn't have that either it's like it might have a really rich lore like the the developers are always going on about the, look the story and these characters and this guy is trying to do this, but this happened to so and so. It's like, all right, well, none of that is apparent in the game. Maybe if I read the wiki, you know, back to front, I might understand what you're talking about. But there's none of that in the game. It's just like, kill these bad guys because they're killing you. Like, I right, well, that doesn't interest. You could really me. take a few cues from Elder Scrolls, which like integrates lore pretty seamlessly into the game, and you can't not learn about the lore when you play Elder Scrolls. It's, yeah, because you you integral. shape it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're a part of yeah. it, and I think like that is probably what's missing in like what you're talking about. I guess maybe that's the primary drawback of an MMO because it's like you can't have one character shape the the lore because you know you turn around and there's 800 characters standing behind them. So it's mm, like right, yeah, you didn't do anything. You're just here and you watched something. So it's like you know, I don't know. It it. Yeah, we should probably move on from this and talk about some of the other games. Oh yeah, yeah there's uh, there's other stuff. From but just E3 like Final well, Vertigo yeah, so. Anthem, like it looks it's, cool. I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm gonna not keep going an eye on it. No. I'm probably gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm excited, but tentatively I'm gonna hold on until I see more. But for, as of right now, I'm excited for it. Yes. So I suppose next thing we should talk about is Battlefront Two gameplay. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Um, Look, passable. Yeah, this looks pretty fun. Yeah. They showed off a pretty uh, expanded. Oh, these guys. Yeah. Yeah, talk about that after. But they showed off an expanded. Um, yeah, I didn't watch gameplay. this because of the commentators. Yep. In, it's like uh, I Justine, she's okay. The other two, I don't know who they are, and they're just loud and annoying. I like I like I Justine. Yeah. Um, but the uh, you know it's it's this takes place in Naboo, obviously. Um, Naboo th- Starfighter, man, you get to fly them. They're like I really like the Naboo Starfighter. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and this game, I mean, obviously, I mean, say we will about the first Battlefront, it looks good, and this game also looks visually, I mean, very good. Um, the art looks is fun. pretty good. Yeah. Like, it's a um, great looking game. It, it doesn't just look, yeah, that's the thing, it's not just, like, graphically, like, impressive, it's, like, artistically very nice as well. Yeah. Now, um, this this game looks fun. I, I'm pretty sure this is just a multiplayer match and not part of the story, because if, if, if it's part yes. of the story... Uh, then they have Ray fighting Darth Maul. No, yeah, this is just this is just the multiplayer. Yeah. which makes me wonder demo. if when you pick up a hero token or whatever it is in in this game, are there because like all the previous Battlefront games have had like heroes assigned to the map, so it'll be like yeah. And I'm wondering if this time you just like select any hero you want. Well, there were there was two in the previous Battlefront, which I assume is obviously what they're building on. There were a couple of different hero modes. There was one. There was basically just like. Two, it was I don't know it was just like maybe story mode fight or there was Walker assault and there was fighter squadron and in those game modes it was pre-assigned heroes for the time period and for like that so it would make sense. <laughs> nice job, man. Eat shit um, there. But then there was also like a heroes mode where I think if you got enough kills or if you lucked into getting like a drop or something you could pick a hero. So it didn't necessarily have to be one that would make sense for that area, but it was just a hero for the side that you were fighting for. So maybe that's what this is, uh, where you get to like 
all right, you got a hero pickup. Who do you want to be? You want to be Ray? You want to be Luke? You want to be Han Solo or something like that? One dude picks uh, Han Solo. It's like, oh man, the enemy's coming at us with Darth Maul. Who are you going to pick? Han Solo. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I don't know. I mean, I really don't care about that. Here? It, when it when it comes to multiplayer, I, don't, I really don't care about canon breaking stuff. No, I don't. It either. doesn't really make it make. I just difference. find it funny that somebody's like, uh, 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 Han Solo. Shit. The wealth of Jedi's that they had at their disposal when they chose Hansel. Um, It'd be cool if they had other stuff too, like maybe other in lore stuff, maybe not from the films, like Ahsoka or something. Yeah, or, that'd be cool. I love to see Ahsoka. Yeah. Also, there's a point in this in this broadcast that we're seeing here of this match where the camera switches between like 15 different players at like in the span of like two minutes because it switches to a dude dies, switches to a dude dies, switches to a dude dies. Like I like that like like switches dies instantly. So it's like wow, these people are getting killed a lot. Um, I also thought that Maul looked a bit OP because he absolutely start like when they get Maul in the second part mm. of this because this is basically Walker assault, but it's those yeah, but it's droid the, transports. Yeah. I forget what they're called. A I forget. I honestly like hover cargos or whatever. Yeah, except in this mode, it seems like, like when the walker vehicle gets to the destination, then the second stage of the game starts. Not, yeah, it's not. It's like oh, that's you not lost. the end. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's. I like those multi-stage maps. I thought yeah. uh, in in every game that they're implemented, and they're usually pretty. Yeah, fun. I really hope they 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 carry on with the the stuff they did with like the Death Star and even the Rogue One DLC for the first game. And you want to fast forward a bit to the to the Darth Maul part? Yeah, where that at? Uh, should be about halfway through. I don't know. How, oh, okay. Let's go here. Phase this, two. Yeah, there we go. Um, because with those DLCs they had, and it wasn't necessarily one game mode, it would be cool if they could keep it. Battle droid, Rory. It would be cool if they could keep it in, um, like like a one one lobby thing where it's like once the game starts, then you go through all these stages rather than like game one ends, then go into the lobby, then game two, which is what those were. Um, because it was like, you know, uh, the Death Star DLC, the Rebels are trying to assault the Death Star, so then that's that's game one, where, like, the Rebels are trying to get past the Star Destroyers to, like, get to the Death Star. Yeah. So then if the Rebels win, then you go to the second game. If it ends, then you swap teams and you do the first game again. And then, like, then if the Rebels can assault the Death Star and save R2-D2 to get the plans or whatever, because it's not, it's not, like, super canon... Uh, sticking to the how the story worked, they just kind of turned it into a cool game mode that was loosely based on the story. But that kind of stuff was really cool because it it like you get to go through like a playlist of maps, but it was never um, it was it was dictated by like the actions of the players and how the games turn out. So it'd be cool if they did something like this, and it seems like they are with the phases of the mission. Yeah, um, I think it looks good so far. I'm excited. I wanted to see some story. So more about like yeah. the story of the game because that's what I'm most intrigued about is having like a story based mission. Yeah, we probably won't. I mean, I get you probably get some trailers, but I doubt we'll see much of that until you're actually playing it. Yeah. So hopefully it'll be good. Yeah. And uh, there's a beta coming out for this as well. I'm if you pre-order the game, then you get to access to the beta. So I'm absolutely going to pre-order this because I'm going to buy this game anyway because the single player looks awesome. Nice uh, squealing tires there. <laughs> but the story mode of this, even like. Even just the multiplayer and maybe playing with bots and with your friends, because I know me and Dave are going to do a lot of drinking games with this. Yeah. Um, even the story mode, so I'm absolutely getting this game. I'm probably also going to get this game. There's also yeah. high up on my list. Uh, so before we uh, go to the squealing tire segue, uh, final verdicts on this game, yay or nay? Absolutely, yay. I'm not going near to it now. Okay, and I'm I'm also going to go near to it. Uh, so speaking of squealing tires, uh, we got the Need for Speed. Oh yeah, uh, Need for Speed, uh, uh, Johnny Ho. So we're watching. So oh, we're watching this press conference. Should we do? What's the? What did you search for that guy? Need for Speed. I, just, I if you just look up out like yeah. And yeah, so we're we're watching we're watching this press conference, and I see the guy. I think his name was Will Ho, the like one of the game designers. Oh yeah. And I noticed his I noticed his shirt right away because it just it it stood out a little bit. It's it was just, it was striking. Yeah, and I. And then I saw the game, and I was, I was with Adam and Sandy. I was like, I think I think he's wearing the same shirt as his character. And then they zoomed out to him, and he was, yeah, I was like, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. They uh, apparently they were um, they told that uh, gentleman that YouTube. Uh, it was right after presenter. Battlefront, by the way. Uh, yeah, you got it there. Yeah. Dang it. What we got here? That's Anthem. No, I think this is uh, this is like a post show or something. Oh yeah, uh, you're right. Yeah, because this is because the, they were like outdoors talking. About no, but that, but that was where they showed off like Johnny right, yeah. or Will Hull or whatever. Yeah, his name was. and 
Oh, here we go. His name is actually Will Ho, by the way. That's yeah. That's I mean, the, yeah, the we're YouTube. not. Yeah. We're not trying to be. Oh, mean. this guy. Oh my so, god. So this guy, this guy is my favorite. So uh, there's this really interesting trend in, uh, in like in just E three things in general, where they're bringing people who are well known, and this guy is well known. But not among this crowd. See, that's the problem. This is what happened when, like, Ubisoft brought in Jason Derulo. Is Jason Derulo famous? Yeah, Jason Derulo's really famous. No one at this event knows who the fuck he is. So who, is he a gamer? No, not at all. Not Why did they bring a little game? bit. Because so God, guy God knows of... YouTuber, YouTube doesn't have any Let's Play channel. This guy's, like, a crazy popular YouTuber. He's got, like... He has two channels, and I think they both have about 10 million subscribers. But no one here knows who he Why is. Why didn't they bring in, like, Markiplier? Can you imagine Markiplier gets up there, yeah, Need for Speed looks great. Like Angry <laughs> Joe or something. Well, they probably would probably want to have done it. But <laughs> doesn't uh, Markiplier do, like, indie games, though? Isn't he, like, an indie game guy? Yeah, but it, it, closer cares? than this guy. This guy does, like, does prank it, videos. Be better than having, like, does what? friggin... Does, like, prank videos. If oh. you, uh, it, this looks like a prank he pulled, but it isn't. He actually was trying. Uh, maybe um, he was, like, maybe he was like getting ready to do it, but, like, his prank guy wasn't ready or something. So uh, he's, like... Like he was stalling for time, and they were like, I ah, fuck it, I'll just read this Apparently script. he told this this gentleman, Marcus, the executive producer, said if you do a good job at this, we might put you in the game. So, um, <laughs> so you actually, guys, you missed it. They actually had uh, b He did bad on purpose. They had B-roll footage uh, from the EA conference where they were going to... It was actually um, the the host that they were going to use to show off Battlefront 2, and it was this ASMR chick, and she was like, okay, and now to show off Battlefront 2, <laughs> I don't know what this game is. Some nice. Was she just really quiet? <laughs> no, I was. I'm lying. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's but as he's saying stupid. it's as ridiculous to bring in someone who's completely unrelated to video games as yeah. obviously this guy is. I, I prefer Jack Septicai over this dude. And yeah, really. Can, though, like bring in somebody who's not interested too, yeah. in it at all. Yeah, really though. Like Jenny see, Nichols. Or look how so, look how confused he is too. He might as well be on fucking Mars. I really like the <laughs> idea of 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 Jack Septicai coming in and be like. <gasps> And he blows out the speakers with a stop I'm running! Like, <laughs> <laughs> sparks raining down from the side of the room. Yeah. So, Need for Speed. Um, it, Need for Speed is basically <laughs> Fast and Furious. <laughs> I'm sorry. This guy kills me. <laughs> yeah, what, it, like. So I'm sorry, is, what is this? The world's fastest, like, 18 wheel truck is what it is. Yeah. He's like, Jesus. <laughs> Because they're driving in, I can only assume, is a turbocharged Shelby Dodge. And they cannot catch up to this 18-wheeler laid down by a a Koenigsegg. And, yeah, he gets in the car. He gets in the... Whatever. Yeah, it's like, who who is this game for? For like, Aaron Paul. This? Aaron Fast the, Paul's Fa- one fucking... <laughs> Fast the Furious fans, man. Vin Diesel's gotta, gotta get this game. Yeah. What's uh, amazing like... is that Vin Diesel is more related to video games than that guy. Yeah. Because at least he's had some games. Like, what <laughs> the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? That's not like... That's not a fault of the dude in the Ford here <laughs> hitting, like, hitting that guy. There's something wrong with that Dodge that got hit. <laughs> well, that's the Look problem, Aaron. They what were in Dodges. Fast? The Dodges... Look I like how the fast idea. this thing is going. I like the idea of the Dodges being so... F- it's not even going, going so fast. fast. Yeah. The, oh, no, it gets going. Yeah, there we go. Going, now I give him a boost by bumping into him. Also... <laughs> Also, what happens here? Every car for like the next kilometer is destroyed. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, look at that tire in the air there. Yeah. Oh my god. It's like like how valuable is that Koenigsegg that you just killed twenty oh. people to keep it out of out of whoever's hands? If I didn't know, I like, feel like this Ford isn't going very fast. If I'm honest. This speedometer is a lie. Be. It's a lie. The um, can't even yeah, but catch the tr- up to a semi. Yeah, but truck. here's the thing. I don't think a laid down semi could also go this fast. Like this is not very fast, but like I don't think a semi could. Oh man, he fucked himself by touching you. Take that. Yeah, I like how the other guy just keeps driving we, too, we, like the regular driver. We also six, commented seven, that when we were watching, like these cars are six, breaking seven, really easy. Like that six, makes sense. X six. And then he he spends the next five minutes trying to do the same thing to this dude, and he keeps fucking up and can't get them to drive. Yeah, except him. that car hit a pole, and all that happened was he got like a, a dent on his hood. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, you should probably so like yeah, this looks to be like Need for Speed the game or uh, Fast and Furious the game. Yeah, you're you're playing a group of outlaws who try to steal fast supercars. It's cars. got a story that no one's hey, invested in. Can we just in. can we just take a moment to appreciate as well? Like Need for Speed Underground and Underground Two were good games. Uh, and they had literally 
nothing to do with any of this. Like, <laughs> what was that guy doing? It's like, I can fit through the gap. <laughs> yeah, don't swerve out of the way, dude. There's only a semi truck going four million towards you. Yeah. All right, stop swerving, asshole. Also, I freeze framed here. I checked this. The car just appears in one frame. Oh, does There's it? an explosion, and then the <laughs> car appears. <laughs> That's the power of a curtain. <laughs> yeah, thing, all right. Man. It's like, because where did that car come from? It's like, it just, it just appears. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, we should yeah. probably move Looks on. Looks like so, a cool Batmobile. Verdict on this game? Uh, I'm fuck this. No. Yeah, I'm with Aaron. Yeah, I'm probably this staying away from awful. this one. Solid fuck that. Uh, we got... Uh, Battlefield 1 DLC. I'm moving yeah. on to the Microsoft press conference. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, I think that's the only thing from E3. Where where the only thing of relevance were those. Yeah. Yay. Sorry, were those. I've done those the same thing. <laughs> so here, so I guess the biggest thing from the Microsoft conference was Metro. Honestly, it was the best yeah. thing from the Microsoft well, conference. Yep, actually, maybe. No, like, well, let's no. talk about the Scorpio first because that was actually probably the biggest thing. Or the the yeah the so, Xbonics as it's called. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so Project Scorpio is the was the title project name for uh, Microsoft's new product, the Xbox One X. Which is like a now turbo. known as the Xbox. Yes, like the Xbox or the Bonics. It's <laughs> the better than the other one. It's not Laura Bailey, by the way. Uh, yeah. The uh, it's uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's really cool. The she slogan is Terraflops. Um, that's that's <laughs> the uh, Xbox Terraflops with the aliens guy. The, Oop, sorry. I think how he Jeez, turns off man. his phone. But <laughs> I'm glad you turned it off because it would have been way louder. The, uh, so, yeah. So, I well, mean, here's what we got. We got a Crackdown 3 trailer with uh, some actor guy for some reason. Terry uh, Crews. Yeah. What, what was that about? I don't know. Also, that was not a great trailer. If I'm no, because they were like, oh, you know what's really popular five years ago? The Old Spice commercial. Let's Does anyone that. also find a... Well, no, I guess Microsoft like has something to do with PC gaming too. I just find it interesting because Terry Crews is explicitly a PC gamer. Is he? Uh, he's like a PC Master Race guy. Oh, is he? Oh. So I think it's like particularly I'm, amusing. Well, to maybe have Crackdown know. Three's coming to PC. The uh, I thought. I just want to point out, except for the Porsche, which I thought was completely new. It's like, and now we're going to introduce the new Porsche. G- that was the dumbest thing ever. Porsche 911 GT2 RS or whatever it is, like the 2017. Okay. I'm like, why? This is not the crowd for this. Aaron, yeah. uh, Aaron, Aaron, <coughs> did you, you see that? You, you follow racing, right? Yes. Did you? Well, s- Formula One. Yeah. So, okay, but did you recognize the race car drivers they had at this conference? Uh, nope. Okay, because I didn't either. I was just wondering if they were, like, famous in the racing world. I mean, they, they might be another... for their, their class. I think they were talking about the, the, the 911 GT2 RS or whatever. Or maybe it was. Okay, so this is a very different kind of racing. I don't uh, know yeah, they, racing. they might be famous, like, Porsche GT3 car drivers or something. Okay, I don't yeah. know. I'm not. Also, what is Mixer? Did anyone find out what that Mixer was? Mixer is it used to be. Um, <laughs> is it not Discord? Discord? What was Microsoft's streaming service before? It was something, and then they mm. rebranded it as Mixer. So, so it's, it's like Twitch, but it's okay. So that's what I thought. Yeah. And it, okay, so it is dumb. That's what I was. That's what I was getting. It's dumb. It's dumb to do something when that's we were, like Twitch but isn't Twitch. When this Xbox conference came out, we actually went to Mixer and checked, you know, we're trying to see what it was, and there was one Beam. commenter. It used to be called Beam. It was, there was one commenter on the whole site, and his comment was, what is this? <laughs> the, uh, that was a lie. Yeah, nobody uses it. Like, no. it Microsoft just stopped. It's great. It's actually, I don't know how intuitive it is to use, but specs-wise, it's got very low latency, so it's like it's... If you're if you're familiar with Twitch, there's generally depending on your internet and depending on the broadcaster, there's generally about a 10 second delay from yeah. what you see to what actually happened. So like you know, the, if something, if you send a message to the broadcaster, they won't see it on the video that you're watching for 10 seconds. Yes. So with with Beam and Mixer now, it's very low latency, so that that's reduced to a couple of seconds. So it's much more instantaneous. And they also have a much more uh, like in- integrated like interaction fe- features. So like, I don't know. I think there was something to do with like co-op streaming and, and stream sharing. So like, if you want to have multiple streamers on one thing, then you can do- set up that as well. With oh. Twitch, you can't natively do that. You need to use like external websites where you can embed multiple uh, streams together so you can watch them side by side. Um, it, it sounds like it's a cool thing, but nobody's going to use it because no, exactly. Twitch is already established. Yeah. So I just want to talk about the the bonic the Bonex again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the he's Sabonics. introducing this thing called. 
I forget, like, there's a new fangled power thing where it's like, we're supplying power simultaneously to every aspect of this thing, as opposed to whatever we were doing before. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, they're talking about it right here, right now. And I'm like, wow, that's a really cool system. I can't wait for that to catch the system on fire because I haven't worked the kinks out yet. This is my favorite. By the way, this was my favorite part of the Microsoft conference because what I actually did like about that is, like, the guts they had to have. To, this guy to come out and say all that and yeah. not explain what any of it meant. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was expecting, okay, it's like none of these people, they're console players. None of these people know what that means. Where's the explanation? That was and my favorite no part of the whole it. thing. I was like, right on, guys. They're like, you know what? If you don't understand this, I don't care. I, I, <laughs> I get everyone claps. They're like, yeah. I said, but I, that's exactly what I said. Like, he came out, did his spiel. And then afterwards, I immediately turned to Andrew and Rory and I said, who were over at the time, and I said, so what does all that mean? <laughs> Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it does sound like an impressive console. Like, it does have a lot of horsepower behind also, it. Also, didn't like the, the Xbox One S have a uh, 4K Blu-ray player? Yes. Okay. I, I, just, I don't know. It I'm seemed like sure. everyone was cheering for the Blu-ray player. So, so the... Um, the, the interesting thing about this to me, I, I agree, it's, it actually isn't a bad console based on the specs that we've seen so far, but yeah. the thing that doesn't impress me at all is this is not, like, it, it's far more impressive to me when they come out and say, like, hey, we're bringing old games to this console and backwards yes. compatibility, because that's what consoles should be doing. Yeah. Being powerful is not what consoles are for. That's what PCs are for. Yeah. The uh, this, yeah. this is not... We'll see how this works. Yeah. This will well, either this will either showcase the directions consoles need to go in in the future. It'll showcase the direction consoles need to go in in the future. It'll either work, and people and lots of people will buy and be like, okay, consoles need to be super powerful now, which would be bad. Or it'll show nobody buys it and they're like, okay, consoles are fine the way they are. Yeah, exactly. Um, but can we just you brought it up? Can we talk about the fact mm -hmm. that they're bringing Xbox original games yeah. to backwards compatibility? That's that's awesome. an actually good idea. It's Sony, the Sony. Mm -hmm. Listen up. This is what you need to do. The <laughs> I know you're subscribed and you watch all of our videos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're big yeah. fans. Nathan the, uh, Drake. Before we get too far from it, though, I saw an interview with Phil Spencer, and he was talking about, like, they asked him sort of questions about, like, who's this Xbox for? Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, he, he, he admitted to it as well. It's, it's not for everybody. If you already own an Xbox, then you're already in the Xbox ecosystem. You're already... One of their primary customers that you know they can they can market games to, yeah. Uh, and you know it's the Xbox or the Xbox is primarily just for people who maybe want a more premium experience, but maybe don't want to go the extra leap to a PC yet. I, I agree that it's an extra leap in terms of work required, yeah. but in terms of money. I, so someone get me the Canadian price figure. Does anyone have it? The Canadian? well, it's it's five hundred dollars uh, U.S. So maybe it might be six hundred. I don't know. Yeah. So that's like you can totally build you, a PC with six hundred dollars. Yeah. I don't know that. You might not want to do it. Like, you might a, not want to put in the work. Yeah. Well, especially as somebody maybe you know, if you're an experienced PC builder and user, you might know how to make a PC that's equivalent for know, that amount of money. We're talking about the power thing right now, by the way. The blue becomes the green, which powers the big square in the middle. Oh, man. That's how the power works. Yeah. Right in there right now. Does yeah. the green go into blue? No, oh, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Blue going to green. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know, it's, it's like... backwards as PC, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh... But yeah, but for for somebody who doesn't want to have to deal with maybe even just the overhead of an operating system because it's this is a console. This doesn't this just needs to turn a game on. It doesn't need to do anything else. I mean, they kind of do. They have the apps and stuff, but I think it's it's marginal. I think for the price, I think I heard that the specs on this it, the graphics card is equivalent to a 1060. Mm. So I mean, uh, I have a 1060 myself. To build to build a PC that's equivalent, it, I think it would take you know just as much. If not more, maybe to build uh, like a comfortable computer of similar spec. Mm. I don't know. Although it's interesting to me because a lot of I agree with you. There are a lot of people that aren't going to want to do the work of building a PC because it is some work. There's some doing involved, especially if you're coming from the console. But at the same time, are those the same people? Are, like, isn't isn't that like a, a like a, a bit of an exclusivity thing where like the people who aren't going to want to put in the work. Are they also going to want the really powerful console? Do those people care about having power? To be fair... Yeah, it's a, it's obviously a smaller group of people. To be fair, but. this is not... Everybody, like, for a while, it was going to be assumed, like, oh, this is the Xbox next generation console. It's not. It's, it's just an upgrade yeah. of the Xbox One. Exactly. So it's not like this is, like, Microsoft is putting all of its bets on this. Like, no, we're just releasing this thing. If people want it, they want it. If they don't, they don't. Well, see, like, you could, you could also, look at it both Daft ways. Daft Punk is getting into 
whatever the Indy 500 or whatever. I feel like you could look at it multiple ways, and because Microsoft has gone like the um, let's not neglect our past mm. uh, st- style of marketing games, especially now we're getting original Xbox games. This Sony. could be the next console. Like at some point in the future, maybe you might see games that are only coming out for the the Xbox One X. There's yeah. also bear in mind as well. I, I agree with you, and I would say to supplement that, I would say that think about what's happening with Windows 10. Yeah, it's Windows 10, and it's just being updated, and it's just Windows 10. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that's what you're getting yeah. at when you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, the, but you you have that family of model. consoles. You have you have the entry level stuff, and you have the premier stuff. And maybe there's some more stuff uh, coming to the premiere level of it. Sure, yeah. Um, that won't be for a couple of years. The premiere stuff. I love the idea. Like, this is a cool concept. I love the idea of keeping it one ecosystem where it's not like, fuck all the players with the 360. Here's that, the new thing. That is the best part. That's yeah. what consoles should be doing yeah. is unifying themselves a little more. And I think they finally got yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's the biggest Only problem. took 10, ages. Oh, my God. 20, 30... 30 plus It's years. one of the biggest problems with consoles this whole time trying to like really? slowly incrementally upgrade is they forgot what they were supposed to be good at. And if there's one thing Nintendo understands, and Nintendo doesn't understand everything. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to them. If there's one thing Nintendo understands, it's Maybe. that the, the more powerful hardware is not always priority A. I think there are lots of things for Nintendo that should be higher up on the priority alphabet that are not. And I want to I want to classify because you're making a good point. We've ragged on the Switch before for the hardware. We weren't ragging on it for the power, although we're ragging on it for not working. Yeah, we were ragging on it for the fact that the console overheats when you leave it in the charger and it bends and it scratches the shit out of your screen. Yeah. We're ragging on it for the fact that you can mess up the Joy Cons and put them on yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, these are the actual stuck. problems. The yeah. problem is not that it's not powerful enough. The problem yeah. is that it doesn't work properly. Yeah. Uh, so I would say Nintendo needs to bump up their QA priority, but they definitely have the right idea as far as it's more about what you're releasing. And if you want to talk about unified brands, no one has that down more than Nintendo as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. The, uh, this is, this is, a, whole, I re- I really this wanted, is a whole lot of nonsense what you're seeing on the I really wanted right Richard now. Hammond to the, run onto the stage, grab the keys, get in it, peel out, and just run over people in the eye. Like, is, what do you say? This die. is nonsense? Why is it nonsense, Rory? Well, okay, no, no, I want to clarify. Remember what? The, this is, uh, for the context of this, this is nonsense. The, uh, not really, not really. Because... Yes, really. It, not really, though, because for a long time, for many, 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 many years, dates mm. back to the 90s, Porsche has been exclusive to very specific uh, game developers, primarily EA. For a long time, the only games that could have Porsche cars in it mm. was EA, EA games, Need for Speed. And who gives a yeah. fuck about okay. Need for Speed? We just saw. So now, they just, you know, they, they, mm. Dan Greenwald was just saying, uh, Forza has a, a six-year deal with Porsche. Um, so that they could have Porsche cars in it, and you know and that's fine. For a couple of games, they've they've done Porsche packs. They've did some negotiations with EA and got the rights for a DLC pack of Porsche cars. But now we have Porsche. Okay, so I did not know the game that. from the beginning. I not, yeah. let me let me adjust my statement because I did not know that. That is important. Now yeah. what is nonsense is the professional drivers who come out and yes. say three words yes. and that's it. No. Now you're watching nonsense. No. <laughs> oh, no. I still agree yeah. with the fact that it's not it, that, that Porsche <laughs> thing is a big deal. It is. They didn't need to premiere a new Porsche on that because remember in uh, remember when um, during the last big car show when uh, Marvel came out and they were going to premiere the new trailer for Thor Ragnarok. I don't remember, remember that because it didn't happen because that's a completely different oh, right. experience. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah, but this yeah. I mean, like you know, they say this is a big deal. And yeah, I mean, everyone knows the GT. If you're a car person and you play Forza, uh, everyone knows the 911 exists. Everyone knows the GT2 RS exists. Uh, saying that there's another one coming in 2018 isn't a huge deal. This is like, hey, yeah, look at this new car that exists. But that's not the problem. The problem is they're taking away time from a show talking about video games, talking about a car. Yeah, but it's only it, when they have Jason, it will be different. Stage. It will be different, Adam, if they didn't then go on to show you it in the game. I mean, fair enough. It's yes, be- it is that, better. That is than, true. I'm not saying the, it's as bad as when J- the Jason Derulo no. thing, where he gets up on stage. Uh, crucifies a song that he wrote that he wrote uh, <laughs> and then leaves <laughs> and then nobody talks about it I agree Aaron the context now that I understand that uh, they have not like been in these games before that adjusts the topic I still think the professional drivers thing is 
bananas. No, it's also no. Uh, it's, the whole thing is fucking stupid. The, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I we mean, should, we need to move on. They should have just shown a trailer, and that would have been fine. I'm getting as a game anyway. I yeah. think anybody who gets Forza is getting Forza anyway. Yeah, well, that's a good. Point I mean, look well. at that. Like, just go. Can you go, just scroll back a little bit? Okay. To what? There. I mean, look at that. That's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, I really like. This is a great. This is a great example because in the previous game they didn't have. They didn't do like day night cycle and weathering. They just mm. sort of had here's a snapshot of weather or uh, time of day. So hopefully that this means they're kind of moving towards the project cars way about it, where or even the old GT games, mm. where uh, or GTR games, where you get the day night cycle and the weathering and you know the the great fidelity because obviously they're moving to the PC and the Xbox market, so yeah. you can do all that stuff. Yeah, which is great. Uh, moving right along from that, um, I think so. I guess we don't need to talk about every single game at the conference because there's literally a million days. Yeah, I was just gonna move along to the next one, which was next big one, which I think we all want to talk about, which we'll is Metro. Skip ahead a little bit, yeah. Oh yeah, the, the uh, maybe. I mean, I really don't, I don't care about Metro, but we can pull it. Oh uh, well, I know Rory wanted. to. No, but I mean, you can just skip ahead in this actual like chronology of yeah. So like Metro to me was so because I I didn't know this was coming. Uh, yeah, they say this is a gameplay trailer. There's no way this is gameplay. I'm sorry. The uh, does it say gameplay trailer on it? Well, it yeah, says it says in it game. Says, I, I know it's no, definitely no, no. They, in it engine. Says, it says in engine. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. It says gameplay right here, but. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was delightfully surprised to see this Metro game. Maybe, uh, maybe I, I thought uh, that con- that series was dead. Uh, you know what, me too, and maybe if I had followed it a little more closely, I would have found out it isn't. Uh, but the reason the I... I uh, I'm pretty sure this was a surprise for most people. Yeah, and the thing I liked about it, probably the most, is that it was given a pretty good spotlight in the show, and it's not the obvious moneymaker, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. like... It's not like they just went for what was going to be easily, you know, their, like, highest profit profitable game. This game was really shown in appropriate light. And in terms of what they actually showed of it, I thought they did a good job of picking. Obviously, I haven't played the game, so I don't know what the coolest scenes are. I thought this was a good choice. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. called Metro Exodus. It takes place um, presumably after the last Metro game. It's been a while since I played. It's been a very long time. I only played it once. Uh, from what I can gather about the game's plot, uh, you're on a train traveling through the wastelands of Russia going from different town to town. So I think they're going to do like the Wolfenstein thing, which is good, which is each level is a self-contained mini sandbox. But yeah. hopefully it's a big Yeah, one, I mean that that one. looked cool when when the train shows up later in the in the demo here mm-hmm. or whatever. I thought that was cool. It's like, "Oh, this is like um there's there's almost like an 8-bit game on Steam now. I think it's called like Last Ride or something like that. Snowpiercer. Um yeah, where there's like you run a train like, you manage a train, you can pick up survivors and ooh, ooh. all that kind of stuff. But you also get off the train and go around and gather supplies for, like, you know, when you're moving along. So I thought that was really cool. Maybe this game is doing something similar to that. Maybe. Um, that'd, be, that'd be cool. I like I like Metro. I just fought, I, I played through the first game, and I found it hopelessly aggravating. <laughs> because it's, it's like, you know, some games are resource management. Metro is, like... To the nth degree of like, you need to have this. You need to know what you're doing in order to do it, because like, there's not enough bullets for the amount of enemies in that game, mm. and it annoys me. So. The second game was a bit better in that regard, I thought, but not by much. Yeah, I will say that was probably my biggest gripe of the game. Is like, it's a bit too hardcore. Like, in I would have liked the difficulty thing where like bullets or like even the menu settings like make bullets a bit more readable. But I understand that's not kind of what the game it is. But I still like the game. It's still pretty fun. Um. Yeah. When he fights this bear, which is definitely not a mole rat, by the way. Isn't that what Jordan said it was? Yeah, Jordan thought it was. Jordan thought the thing that comes out of the church in like thirty seconds is a mole rat, and I'm like, oh, Jordan, Jordan, like, Jordan, like this is Fallout. This is Fallout Five. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't Jordan know. It look, it looks good. I obviously this is not an actual gameplay trailer. This is like, yeah, he thought that was a he thought that was a mole rat. Jordan, like, Jordan it's a bear. <laughs> really, Jordan. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, it kind of looks like a mole. I wouldn't say it's a mole yeah. rat, though. It just looks like a really large mole. You might have said mole, but it's definitely a bear. No, you said mole okay. rat, I remember. The, uh... Yeah. I think it's just a bear with just massive fuck-off And no ears, for some reason. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so this game looks good. So what are, what are, what's our verdict on this one? 
Um, I yeah, I'm in. Okay. Hey, it looks first interesting. One I'm in so far. It <laughs> looks interesting. It looks. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna go with Aaron again. Where it's, it looks interesting. I'm probably in, but I'll have to see more. Mm. See when it comes out. Might come out the time our other other games are coming out that I'm I'm more interested in. So yeah, this part we're at the train. So yeah. Um, moving on from that. Uh, so let, we could run down through it here. We got Crackdown Three. Yeah. Nothing really too much to say about that. Yeah, no. the the trailer was it was awful, but I'm still looking forward to the game. I, Aaron not, Aaron's thoughts are the same as mine. Yeah. yeah, I was never a big fan of the Crackdown game, so I'm probably not, I'm probably going to give that one a miss. Well, the what they advertised last time at E3 was it had like this big you could destroy everything in the city. Basically, they didn't touch on that at all this year, so it makes me wonder maybe they're that's not in the game anymore. Mm. But they didn't really show anything other than some multiplayer dudes running around shooting yeah. that shit. Uh, so whatever. We got Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Can, can we throw that up? Just the tra- that trailer? Uh, or there's a gameplay. There's a Dragon Ball Fighters gameplay. Fighter Z. Oh, is there no space? I don't know. No, it's Fighters. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, so this is the game playing right now. So is it right 3D? Like, it's, I don't no. know what it is, it, it looks, but it looks, it looks exactly like, it's like the show. Me. It's such a... It's so pretty looking. Like this is awesome. I've wanted this for years. Like since like I first got into Dragon Ball. Nice Kamehameha there, Super Saiyan two Gohan. Um, I wanted this for years. This kind of game where you I just was Kamehameha. Uh, in it's it's the uh, Hawaiian King is Kamehameha. The move is Kamehameha. Oh. Um, and I'm not getting into that. Um, the. So I've wanted this for years since like I first started to watch Dragon Ball back in the nineties. It's a two D fighting game, fast paced, yeah, excellent. Not, not, the, not 3D, the Xenoverse yeah. thing, which is fine. But I just wanted like a two D fighting game that was. I know this is not for. This definitely is not for everybody. They did a great job of flattening out the visuals because it. I guess it is three D. It just looks two D. Yeah. No, I I think it's a two D fighter. I don't think there's depth. I don't think there's any sides. But the camera does rotate sometimes. I think that's for like a, a special animations. I don't think it's like. You want to fight, dude? I think I think it's they're showing off the. Uh... Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a 3D model. Anyway, no, what I'm saying, I don't think the action is 3D. I don't think you could sidestep into and out of the foreground. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, you know, visually, I agree. Yeah, it the, is 3D. the character models are three dimensional. Yes. Oh, yeah, 100. Yeah. percent Yes. The um, um, I I I agree that this aesthetically looks like what I've seen of the show, and it looks like they've you know achieved that goal of. Let's make the let's make the visuals of the show into or aesthetically into a game, um, but I mean I I couldn't really care less about it. It looks I, cool. So Aaron's thoughts are exactly. I agree, a hundred percent. I'm like, yeah, this is what yeah. they should be making. I'm not like <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not mean, going near it. Oh, by the way, like Freezer can never. Also, I like the low frame rate. Uh-huh. I need to add. But it's a fighting game. Anyone can beat anybody. Yeah, I know. But it's just like in it's in like the, the multiplayer thing when uh, Darth Maul was fighting Django khakis. It's like in uh, somebody showed a, 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 a footage from Injustice Two where um, Supergirl's like finishing move in that is she punches somebody into orbit. Punches them again, flies around the sun with them, and then slams them back on the earth. Why not just she, throw them into the sun? And I don't I mean, know. You're already there. I don't know. Because uh, it's not actually... I don't think it's a finisher, but it's like the super move or whatever. Mm. I don't care but, about finishers. Just throw them into the sun. But uh, then uh, um, she does it to, like, Green Arrow. And the people are like, Green Arrow couldn't survive that. Like, yeah. are you out of your <laughs> mind? <laughs> like, it's tough to uppercut in the space, flown around the solar system, and then slam back. So she to can Earth travel mu- faster than light. Uh, yes, Green Arrow is, is that ever a topic in the comics? Mm, occasionally, why? What do you mean that they? Well, can I just, just wonder, it? like, oh my god, she can go faster than light. We, what we knew about physics is wrong. Ye- not that I can think of, but I'm sure it's been addressed. For, for mm. as weak, for as weak as he is physically, Green Arrow has to be one of the most effective DC villains. He, he literally doesn't care. He just murders people all the time. Yeah. Uh, he's anyway, like, I don't care about his We move on to the next game. Um, they showed a little bit more of uh, Cuphead, which is that like kind of like 1920-30 style animation uh, 2D side-scroller uh, that I've been looking forward to for a couple of E3s now. It's finally got a date. It's coming out in September. I believe September 8th. I'm, don't quote me on that one, though. But September 29th. 29th. There you go. Definitely don't quote me on that one. Yeah, again, I don't know if this is just a boss fighting game still, or if they've added stuff to it. I think they've added stuff to it, because I'm pretty sure there's, like, platforming it, but, I mean, it looks good. Yeah. Looks like, this is a really pretty looks game. Looks cool. 
So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, what else did they show? Um, uh, sea of Thieves and State of Decay 2. Yeah. Do you want to... Because I know you're, you're excited about State of Decay. Do you want to bring that one up? State of Decay 2 gameplay. Here we go. So, this is obviously a sequel to State of Decay 1. This is one of two zombie games that came out... Um, or that premiered... Not premiered, but were like shown at this E3. This and Days Gone... I prefer Days Gone. Aaron prefers this one, so I'm just going to let Aaron talk about this one for a little bit. Uh, yeah, this game captures what I like about the zombie apocalypse and that it's like slow-paced, more kind of gritty. The, the the horror and the fear comes from like the absence rather than maybe the presence of different elements of things, like slow-moving zombies and you know desolation and all that kind of stuff. And the persistence of these games, like the first game, it had a finite amount of cars. So you could steal all the cars in the game, but if you broke them, then that's it. They're gone. They're your, it's, it's done. Um, and so, like, you know, and, and when you die, it's permadeath. So it's like that character that you spent, you know, hours leveling up and you fucked up by running into the middle of a bunch of zombies, they're dead. That's it. Mm. And it's like, and that, that permanence is is seen throughout the game. Like other characters, like their morale will drop because of somebody that they were friends with died. And it's like, you know, then everybody gets sad, and you, you might need to take somebody out and like go for a walk with them to try and cheer them up again, or try to like. And it's just that kind of cool stuff where it's 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 more the player dynamic rather than just the sheer amount of zombies. Like kill kill millions of zombies. Like I don't really care about it. the zombies. Isn't the focus, or the zombies aren't the focus of this game. They're just in it. I really like as a gameplay mechanic, per, like that permanence. Like it's one of my yeah. favorite things about XCOM is that like you yeah. can pour ages into this character and then they just die yeah we should also just briefly talk about the just because you mentioned xcom <clears throat> mario and ubisoft are partnering up to make an xcom mario game <laughs> with raving rabbits of all things that's the weirdest game are we can talk about that more at the at the rabbits XCOM. Oh, we'll, oh we'll be talking about that yeah uh so say the cave looks pretty good i agree um, it looks fun and it's got multiplayer and co-op this time which is what desperately oh, what the it? first game needed yeah uh well if it has multiplayer i might pick it up and play yeah. with you Hell yeah, man! Are you picking up on PC? Yeah. Are you playing it on PC? You're playing. I'll, on a... I mean, I'll get it on whatever. If, okay. if there's people to play with, I'll play it on we'll, whatever. We'll, we'll workshop it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what else do we got? We got uh, Sea of Thieves, which is that like pirate thing. Looks I'm not even right. a little into it. I agree, it does look all right. I, I did. I'm not because here's the thing: even... to play this game, you're gonna have to know like eight other people to play this game. Yeah, it I'm seems. just wondering, like, if... Oh, I don't want to watch the gameplay with people. Show me the gameplay from the press conference. Yeah, uh, this one. Yeah, like, I don't know if if it's it's multiplayer, like, only. And Probably if it is, it looks then... looks like multiplayer only. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure this is fun for a certain type of gamer. I'm just not that type of gamer. Yeah. I don't have, a, yeah. a, like, 80 friends who play one game. What kind of gamer does? Hmm. <laughs> Rooster Teeth. <laughs> Yeah, this will be great did, for some Rooster Teeth videos. They it will. This will make excellent fun. And, and that's about it. <laughs> they did say that it has matchmaking, so if you want to play with randos... Oh, man. I love playing with randos. That. <clears throat> that's why I, I like the games. concept of this game. Um, I think uh, Ubisoft's... Uh, would, like, Skull and Bones. Yeah, I think that it's better. Yeah, that looks that looks more interesting, which is... How does he climb that? I don't know. Yeah. Also, there's another one. Funhouse played it for a little bit. I forget the name of it, but it was like a similar thing where it's like... The side, the side on one? No, it's not the side on oh, one, okay. but it's like a 4v... It's like a massive team oh, okay, battle. Yeah. And like you play as either the British or the Pirates, and the British are hilarious. Because like, mm, load the <laughs> cannon! It's like everyone is <laughs> Nigel Thornberry. Essentially. But <laughs> you, you uh, the, the Pirates receive help from gr- health from Grog. And uh, you know the, the drink, um, and the English all receive their health from drinking tea. So everybody's going around with tea cups, and like, it's really funny. Um, we got uh, all this game really did was make me want to play through Black Flag again. And you will so. with this new Ubisoft game. We'll talk about that more. Um, Aaron, a game's coming out that you're probably really interested in. Life is Strange too, or uh, Life, is, Life strange. is Strange DLC. Is it DLC? Uh, well, it's probably a standalone. It is it a standalone. Is standalone. It's three yeah. uh, three new episodes that take place before the first game. Um, it's sort of about if you played the first game at all. Have you guys played it? No, played but it's free it. on PS Plus right now, and everybody should absolutely pick uh, it up. I played the first act, and then I okay. stopped because I had a tooth, four teeth out, and I just stopped playing it. I never went back to it. Well, uh, this game takes place... Oh, what am I, what am I pressed? Okay, there we no go. No spoilers, please, unless, uh, unlike Andrew. 
it's kind of it's it's difficult to spoil because it takes place before everything. Well, you say that, but the Life of Strange thing came up, and Andrew immediately went, "But blank dies at the end." <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> <Yeah>. what? <laughs> Thanks for that, you asshole. Yeah, uh, Andrew was really upset that this was a prequel, as I recall. No, he, um, yeah, he was. The uh, I don't know why. I don't think that this is this is being developed by a different studio, which wait, has me that's uneasy. not a good thing. Yeah, it's not being done by Don't Nod. So this isn't Life is Strange 2. This is just, I guess, ancillary you smoke? game to yeah to the first one. So you play as Chloe from the first game before everything. Uh, and I guess yes. this takes place... Chloe is Ashley Burke's character, correct? Uh, Ashley Burke, yes. So a, yeah. more Ashley Burke, hooray. Uh, not sarcastic. Um, so the, I guess the primary the, the thing here is like... If you you know, there's no spoilers at all because you you learn this stuff at the literally the very beginning of the first episode of the original Life is Strange. Max has been away for a couple of years. She used to be friends with Chloe, and um, there's been some stuff going on in the area that Chloe lives in. So all that stuff, you, you kind of it kind of delves into the history of that in the first game, and and some of that uh, comes to fruition and you see like the resolve of a lot of it I guess from the ba- from the looks of it this takes place while Max is gone away uh, for, uh, before the beginning so this is like Chloe and Rachel and their adventures I guess uh, so I, I'm really interested to see it because the first game was awesome and uh, I, I will definitely pick this up DLC, I need to play the first one first I'm planning on getting to it sometime this week yeah um, so and I think they also said there's a bonus episode uh that Max might show up in or something like that. Ooh, it's cool. kind of yeah. I don't know if maybe it takes place like immediately after or I don't, I don't know how it works. Uh, we got uh, or something. oh, I was just gonna mention the other ones before because there's oh, nothing sure. really else big. We got Ori and the Will of the Whisper. Um, the Wisps or is it Wisps? Uh, was yeah. a Whisper. I don't know. Uh, which is a sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest, a game I've not played. This one looks to be more of that. So if you're in, I heard it was quite good. So you know that that exists. Uh, the last night I. F- forget what that one that was was. like an 8-bit kind of side scrollery it had a really cool aesthetic to it because it almost looked 3d but it was still like oh yeah yeah yeah, i remember that um Uh, i don't even know how that'll play if that was just kind of like a cool trailer but oh and minecraft (laughs) in 4k yay uh Uh, yeah yeah, that's just i mean who cares about minecraft 4k uh no one whatever but i think the cool thing is they're also they're kind of maybe listening to the modding community now and they're bringing um, I essentially, I guess, would say new lighting graphics to the game. Mm. There's like a, a sort of a more detailed mode where torches, you know, give off light now, and and the the shadows, you know, it actually has shadows in the game now. Uh, pretty much anything like you would see from like if you just Google like modded Minecraft and you see like very shaders like the the trees blowing in the wind and that kind of thing. Like that's all that'll be added to the game now. So that's really cool and I'd like to see that supported on Xbox and other consoles. And they're also unifying the platform so that the tablet versions and the phone versions, the three sixty versions and the PC versions they're all unified. So like you can play together with anybody anywhere now. That's pretty uh, I like that. Yeah. Hell of a leap there for the carrier gore. So yeah, I think the uh, beside I think the, my favorite thing out of the Xbox conference was definitely this game, which is one of my most anticipated titles of this year. Love the first one, except the ending, um, which was shit. It's a bit brief. It's a bit of a letdown. It's like build up, build up, build up, build up, and a game ends. Well, it's like no resolution. It's like get ready for the next game. Yeah, right. uh, this game looks awesome. I I've always wanted the idea of building up an army. Um, and then, like, uh, you know, taking over fortresses, assigning commanders, that sort of thing. I really like that, so I'm really looking forward to this game. And I like it's the natural progression for the Nemesis system that was introduced in the first one. And it looks to work quite well. Like, they showed um, one guy, w- one YouTuber was playing in like the, on, the sh- on the floor. It wasn't like the demo they showed to the st- on the stage. And they showed uh, he was assaulting a fort. And um, the fort... Like the guy, so what he was, so what Talion had tried to do before, is he infiltrated the fort beforehand and tried to in like take over the minds of one of the like of one of the war chiefs, um, and have him turn traitor on the overlord who like the who ruled the fort because there's the overlord who's like the general and then his war chiefs are his captains, and he tried to turn one of the captains against the general, and uh, it didn't work. Talion that that mission failed for Talion. 
And then later on, when he goes to attack the fort with his, when Talion goes to attack the fort with his army, the overlord of the fort comes out with the dude who Talion tried to take over. And the dude was like, how dare this this traitor betray me and work for the Bright Lord. Oh, I'll kill him. And he kills his own captain. And then, like, the dudes you're assaulting with is like, he killed his own captain. He wasn't even working with us. Like, what the hell? And I'm like, that's so cool. That, like, it's really dynamic. I love that. I, and I hope it actually works. Like, that's something that they're actually doing as opposed to... There's a dead dragon right there. Um, yeah. That yeah, is, is not just like in 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 terms of just like simple sets. Wow, that's hell of a leap. Um, yeah, hopefully that encourages um, the game to to play in that way because I think it's maybe a shortcoming in the first game with the Nemesis system was every now and then you would get these notifications that like so and so is fighting so and so. You can go watch if you want, or if yeah. you don't, it'll just resolve itself. Which is cool. It's like okay, so the, it kind of it made it felt like the world is alive and stuff is happening in it, but it it was kind of like, well, these two guys that are now low level, are in one area. I'll just go kill both of them, and that pretty much every single time that happened, I just went and killed both of them, because if you let it resolve itself, one of them kills the other one, then one of them becomes a really high level because like you know they killed the other guy and so the reputation or whatever goes up. So it's like I'm not gonna let this guy just keep going up and up and up and level until he's like you know one of the members of the thing that i you know is impossible to get to so it just it kind of maybe it felt like maybe don't have them level up yeah like that because it's just like uh, well i don't know what you what you should be able to do is like as know. soon as you it, like when you start having your own followers you should be able to call them in to back you up at any time because that was a problem i found mm. in the first game because i remember I, wa I wandered in to take care of one captain and then, like, an overlord appeared with five other captains. So instead of fighting, like, <laughs> one dude, I ended up fighting, like, 20 fucking orcs. And it, was yeah. just, it took me an hour of hit-and-run tactics to take all of these guys out. It was so... Yeah. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to this game. I'm um, into this game gameplay-wise. I'm... Like this. Uh, then, what, what, it, what like, kind of took it out... Uh, took me out of it was, um... When they had the like little cinematic where you're talking to um, the dude. Uh, oh, uh, at, uh, uh, Braze, I believe his name. Yeah, is. I was so not into that. The dude. Yeah. So you like, you take over in, the in funny the, guy. In, oh, the funny guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, like I was wondering, they kind of they kind of made that out to be like it was dynamic, but I, I very much feel like he's the who was the guy in the first game, like Rat Bag or something. Yeah. I feel like he's the new one. I like, don't know though. I think it might just be a random. I I hope it is because it, it just it seemed like the 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 commentary was too specific to to not be like a main guy. I mean maybe it's maybe it's not. I don't know. But it just. It, I definitely wasn't like someone else made the comparison on YouTube, but it like it was more Shrek to me than Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like it, it really was, and I, that's yeah. not what I. That's really not what it, I jumped it, into. It Lord seemed of Rings a little for. out of place. Yeah, it didn't that that. But the game gameplay wise, I'm I'm down 100. percent Sign me up. All of this. Yeah. And I play games more for gameplay, so I probably will actually play this. And the I might not buy it. I, like I did like his little pop story. noise though. There's a little. Yeah. <laughs> Let me pop his head off. That was funny. I like the idea of the story too, because like that's something that always bothered me in the Lord of the Rings lore, because the time between the Hobbit, so the end of the Hobbit. The necromancer leaves. Um, I forget. Um, I forget. The, he leaves Mirkwood. The necromancer is Sauron, and he heads to Mordor. And then he has a hundred years, mm. or so, give or take. Yeah. Uh, in Mordor, and I'm like, what was he doing all that time? Like, was he just like sitting sitting around like like the like fucking like wanking off? If like, you've seen the movies, you certainly have to wonder what Gandalf was doing all that time. Yeah. Really but, different in the books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the so, uh, props to this guy playing this demo. Because the guy, the, the orc he was just facing said, get down from there and face me like a true warrior. And then he just smashes him with the hands <laughs> of the thing. Um, I've never understood, like, why are you killing that thing? Why did it crumble to dust? Maybe it's made out of, like, oh, I, I think he turned it to ice or something with his attack. Oh, maybe. But, uh, but I like the idea of, like, because this takes place between the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. I like the idea that the reason that, like, like Sauron, Jesus Christ, <laughs> wasn't doing anything is because he had Talion to deal with. I mean, I know it's, it, this is not lore at all. Like, this is not, like, in the official lore of Lord is of the Rings. Is it not? Nope. No, it is not. Oh, it okay. is not. I thought they took, I thought this was based on an actual thing. I don't think so. 
But okay. it, there's, it's not like blasphemously inaccurate, but it's not what happened. The uh, I thought it, I thought like the first one at least was loosely based on some like maybe almost notes, not like a full fleshed out story, but it was based on something that existed within the lore. I thought maybe I'm well, wrong. Well, there is a crap ton of lore. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and I'm definitely not familiar with all of it, but I don't uh, think it's lore breaking. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily lore, uh, lore, uh, but like I, yeah, I, I, I hope they don't attempt somehow to make it canon. Not that you can really do that. Yeah, I but. think it's, I think it's detached enough that it doesn't really matter. I mean, we should probably move on yeah. from this, just because oh, I don't absolutely, get to deal with we got a whole bunch of other absolutely. Stuff. Um, but anyway, I think that's it for the Microsoft conference for the most part. Uh, pretty well. Yeah. They they had a couple, uh, you know, they had a couple of like a lot of indie games that they announced, which all look fine. Um, but I think the biggest ones for me were definitely Forza Seven, Dragon Ball Z Fighters, and that's just for me. Mm. Anthem was a big one. Um, Don't you want to watch some children, though, Adam? Oh yeah, this was by far the worst conference in my opinion. What was this? So, wh- what this the was... hell was this? Okay, so there's a couple interesting things about the Bethesda conference. Uh, that I want to highlight. So, there are a lot of really good complaints about the Bethesda conference. One of them is not, in my opinion, like, a lot of people complained that they even showed, like, Dishonored 2 DLC and Wolfenstein. Uh, like, there were genuine complaints that they even showed that, because they were like, eh, those, like, aren't the big titles. That is exactly the kind of attitude that prevents really good single games from becoming franchises. And if those people were running Bethesda, we never would have gotten a second Dishonored game. Uh, you know, yeah, th- also the st- the DLC, they said, is sh- slightly shorter than the base game and is a standalone. So you could argue that it's just another Dishonored yeah, game. Yeah, and I think that it's important to shine the light on your, well, I'm going to say less-selling franchises, because it's not like Dishonored doesn't sell. It's no. not like it's some like dark people horse it. that people don't know about. Uh this conference overall did have a lot of problems. Uh, I think... This whole thing was stupid. This this operation here was dumb. Uh, the, v, the like, peculiar, like, opening with VR, I thought was a, a strange thing to do. Um, Skyrim on the Switch is it, fascinating to me. Uh, the man selling a five-year-old game is, is new. The uh, I'm interested. I want to see how it works on the Switch. That that it's on six a, years old now. From a technical perspective, I'm fascinated with that. Um, this is six years old, really, Jesus. But yeah, it came out in 2011, in wow. November of 2011. Wow. Uh, 11, 11, 11, right? Uh, it was oh, a yeah. November 11th game. It was uh, such a good game. Uh, it, it was, I agree. Um, Enough for them to make like eight more versions of yeah, it. I feel like Pete Hines plays it all the time. <laughs> it's great. Uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like um, he's playing it right now. Yeah, <laughs> you can't see it, but he's yeah. There's he's no doing bugs. It. Yeah, there's I no f- bugs. I play it all the time. I haven't had any problems. <laughs> I feel like there's no bugs. Um, but, uh, Skyrim has become the uh, Resident Evil Four of the game world, where it's <laughs> it's the slut of the game world to literally get with every console. Because I'm pretty sure at this, because originally. Uh, Resistant uh, e- um, Resident Evil was uh, a supposed to be a GameCube exclusive, and it's now been ported to its eleventh console. Yeah. The uh, also I I was watching including one fridge. So I was watching a, a, a one of the things I did. Uh, I, I watched this uh, bit a couple times, and one of the things I did as I watched a streamer watch it, and when he mentions like uh, Pete Hines mentions at the beginning, yeah. uh, like something about Skyrim before anything with Skyrim's ever shown. And he was like, man, I better not hear this motherfucker say Skyrim once more during this whole conference. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, not only did we have uh, Skyrim on the Switch, but we had Elder Scrolls Legends, like the Skyrim expansion, which amuses me to no end. So, like, there was just nothing for this game. Like, at this conference, it was, you know, they had, like, an expansion to... to uh, a card game I don't play, and they had Quake, which is an eSports an e- shooter, which I honestly, like, fucking hate. Yeah, the, the only one big one was Wolfenstein 2, I think. Yeah, and that look, I'm so excited for that game, I cannot even... I, my big takeaways were Wolfenstein 2 and this Dishonored thing. The Dishonored, yeah. I, I, the, yeah. The, the, um, Everything else is boring The as Quake hell. thing... I, I'm into Quake. That could have been done a lot better. That like that like whole like dramatic like black and white thing they had going was ridiculous. Like remember like the original mm. Quake is the original like, esport. I'm like yeah, but like it's not the it's not the esport now. The uh, like I'm into Quake, but like you don't have to make it like all like dramatic and like it's this big introduction. It's Quake. 
I know what yeah. it is. It's been, like Quake's been around forever. Yeah. The um, it's been I around saw for my first pro Quake match when I was like four years old. Like, it's what? been around so long that John Romero <laughs> made fucking die katana with it. The, uh, <laughs> uh, like, so like this conference, it had like, I mean, admittedly, like Wolfenstein Two and Dishonored Two were some of my favorite things at the whole of E3. Yeah. But the rest of the conference. Was like like the only other thing that they showed. Oh, Elder Scrolls Online, that was good, but oh, we knew it was there. Oh man, Elder Scrolls! They announced the thing that was announced four fucking months ago. That's the thing; it was already we knew it was coming. Well, they announced it like two e threes ago. Yeah, like or at least one. Yeah, but no, like the like the Morrowind expansion the Morrowind. we're talking about. Oh, the, okay. We already knew that was coming. Like it was cool yeah. that they showed that and shone the spotlight on it. But it's like, eh, we knew about that. Who the fuck wants? D- Doom VR, where Doom VFR. the only shooter that's like more shootery than like any. Other shooter, all you do in that game is shoot. There is no story beyond shoot the bad guys and shoot them till they stop moving. That is the story (laughs) of Doom 4. Let's not make it into a shooter. Let's make it into whatever the fuck VR thing. This is a rail shooter, I guess. Yeah, I see. What I don't like about VR, and Bethesda have addressed that, they're probably likely going to ship their VR games with multiple locomotion options. Don't do teleporting. I fucking... Teleporting is so stupid in a game. It's like, I need to de-immerse or demerse myself from the game to be like, I want to be here now. Click a button. All right, now I'm here. Now I'm immersed again. Oh, wait, hang on. I got to move over here again. Move over there. Is VFR stand for virtual fucking reality? Probably. I would assume. Probably very fucking real. I I would assume it's virtual fucking reality, like BFG. Right, yeah. Like BFG. This Big interests me. Oh, I really want to try this. Um, you know, I really want to see how the power armor works in, in VR. I really want to play a, a big a big RPG in VR. Yeah, but like you're like but, one of the eight people on the planet who oh, have a fucking vibe. But so man, this means nothing for the rest of us. Said Aaron wants to play this game in VR, even if it's just he for he plays 20 it all minutes. the time. There's no box. <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually, Pete Hines doesn't play this because VR makes him sick. Oh, so. But, so there are bugs. <laughs> yeah. uh, probably. There's probably lots now all of Pete Hines off. Been yeah. Yeah. Hines oh. play. If Pete Hines doesn't play a game, I don't buy it. The joke, <laughs> should, I'm not even going to explain that joke for people. Uh, the, other, yeah, the, so, the, only other, yeah. the only other thing that was announced really was uh, the Evil Within 2. Okay, oh no, I'm sorry. Game-wise. Three things. Three things I really liked about right, this. Wolfenstein well, oh 2, God, Dishonored, and Evil Within why? 2. I thought I thought I, okay like Evil admittedly, Within was the story that was trying so desperate to beat Resident Evil 4 it hurt. The uh... I, I thought it was cool, and I thought it was cool that they shone it on something that wasn't necessarily like shown. shown. Yeah, you're I right. I thought it was yeah. an awful uh, trailer. Mister Correct, my okay. speaking. All the the time. Uh, well, I I think if you're not into the Evil Within, that was an awful trailer um, because I think it was a little too convoluted. If you're not actually invested in like the the franchise, because um, it really, if you're not invested in the Evil Within franchise, like who knew what was happening at all in that trailer? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I did like that they like demonstrated something again that wasn't necessarily like their number one bestseller uh, I, I get that but i mean just like the evil within i but don't... it has a fan it has a fan base <clears throat> i suppose but it's lazy horror it's the same but, way that regardless of whether you like it like it or not bethesda there's a lot of bethesda fans Fair that enough. like it where Fair else enough. are they gonna show it Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. but we also get this probably the worst thing that bethesda's ever done creation yep. club we oh. we should we should do we even are we even ready to dissect this yet? Do you want to wait till next week to talk about kind this? Kind of. We can probably talk about this longer next week. What this is is paid, paid for mod. mods, yeah. which you know to refresh everyone's memory, Bethesda tried this like two years ago, Round and about. it was met with resounding negativity. As it has been this time. If you go on to Fallout Four uh, right now and look at their, I think if you look at like on Steam Fallout Four, it's getting blasted in the comments and so it should like that's not i i understand the idea of like maybe curating stuff and then you're paying bethesda employees to curate mods so that everything isn't just giant inflatable penis mods but it works fine it's worked fine for decades like people just put mods in their game and let them play with it i can't wait for Stop trying uh, to do this i can't wait for jim the jimquisition on this by the way be <laughs> awesome. why is that that this summer everybody suddenly became weird about mods because gt because fucking tur- uh, take two interactive that's just what got i rid mean of, like uh, why did they all of a sudden become weird about it like what's yeah. wrong with everybody what it happened? wasn't even multiplayer mods it was the single player mods that nobody gave a fuck about yeah well mm-hmm. so to fill that in as well take two has gone out and for some reason and banned mods from gta 
single player, not online, because yeah, you can't. The, the specific modding tools that they banned were tools for single player, not online traders. Yeah, tools that explicitly were so, were okay. Uh, this, it's I, the, I, I, okay, I so this 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 right here, th- this was Ooh. already announced. This is something I would argue that actually didn't need to be shown. The Elder Scrolls Legends. Well, they need to uh, pan out the fucking pathetic forty minute. And, oh, which on. brings me to another point. Why was Skyrim VR not in this conference? Why was it in Sony's conference? Because it's exclusive to PSVR. Oh, this needed it a lot more than that needed yeah. it. Can I be honest with you? Yes. Like this to me feels like like there's a there's a bit in uh, Emperor's New Groove where cr- where Kronk Krog I forget what the character's name is. Kronk, I believe it's Kronk. Who cares? He he, he says uh, he's talking about Cusco's. Like they're, they're trying to poison Cusco, Cusco, and Isma's is like Cusco's. Yeah, he's like Kronk. Get the poison. He's like what poison? The poison for Cusco. Like oh, the poison. The poison we specifically got for Cusco. The poison specifically designed to poison Cusco. Cusco's poison. And like that's the kind of like like people use that meme all the time. And they're like, I need to. F-, it's like I'm f- I'm done a I'm 500 words into an essay. I'm done, and it needs to be 1,500. I gotta lengthen <laughs> this somehow. Or it's like, yeah. like the the Hitler started World War II. World War II was started because of Hitler. World War II yeah. began as well, a result of Hitler's also, actions. Also, why is this trailer so fucking long? I don't know. <laughs> what is this? is just committed to doing these conferences now, and this was a lull while they wait to announce Elder Scrolls Six next year. I if they announce Elder Scrolls Six. Okay, next year. so I agree that th- yeah, this. This was largely a conference that didn't really need to be a conference, although I think we did get three great things out of it. Those three great things honestly could have been in someone else's conference. By the way, it's yep. not going to be called Elder Scrolls Six, Aaron. They actually announced the name of, of the console, um, or the new the, the new uh, Elder Scrolls was game. It Skyrim 2? No, it's uh, Morrowind was better! <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the game. The uh, Skyrim or Elder Scrolls Six. There's still Morrowind was this better. This is taking place in Somerset like Isles. We're sorry. Elder Scrolls Six Black Marsh. The uh, there you go. So this I, like that that could have not been in the conference, in my opinion. Uh, the other stuff, I I'm okay with it being in the conference, but this conference didn't need to happen. Also, what a shitty fucking land where a dragon is perched atop a tower and it's burnt, actively burning down your own amusements. Also, I remember uh, it's a wyvern, Adam. It's actually not a wyvern. It's a, it's a. It doesn't have legs, though. It doesn't have arms. Or it, well, that it means that, that means it's not a it's wyvern. A then it needs to have legs. It's, it's a wyvern. It's a snake in cosplay. It's a uh, uh, winged. Snake. It's a winged serpent. Whatever. Let's move on. Sweet music they pick for this Nintendo Switch yeah. Skyrim trailer. By the way, yeah, totally it's like it's like Mario themed ba doom ba. Um, moving so, on to Ubisoft. U- Ubisoft, Ubisoft. Yeah. Oh no, wait, we didn't talk about Wolfenstein. <laughs> Ubisoft. Oh, Wolfenstein looks great. Yeah, Wolfenstein uh, looks good. Probably my most, I my it. favorite it looks game from the conference. Fucking cool. Made me want to play the first one because I haven't played it yet. You should play it. It's really good. I will. I own it, so I'll Ubisoft. play it. At some point. You can look like you've. You have nothing to do with the Elder Scrolls. Want to ruin your game? Yeah, you look like you can be a shitty. There con- you go. I, I like the idea of the dragon. Want to play not Breath of the Wild? <laughs> play the six-year-old Elder Scrolls game. I really like the idea of the Dragonborn being a big Legend of Zelda fan, so he spends the whole game in cosplay. <laughs> the uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, Ubisoft. so uh, Ubisoft. Uh, lots of great stuff here. Um. Well, well I mean, absolutely. They opened with their, you know, like, the absolute pinnacle of this thing oh. with a, a Mario crossover oh. with Rabbids. Can we can we bring I mean, up that, that beginning of that conference where <laughs> a, a French-Canadian who speaks terrible English... I think he's a, a French-French person. Oh, is he French-French? <laughs> the, uh, My apologies. A French-French person who speaks terrible English... And a, and a Japanese man who speaks terrible English trying to hold the press conference together on stage for yeah, about five I, minutes. Yeah, I, I saw that comment from the thing because I was in Montreal. Oh. And and I was just like, what are they talking about? And then I watched the conference and I saw Miyamoto come out with friggin' Eve Gilmo. And I'm like, oh, that's what Adam was talking about. The, uh, so, um, can, can I ask a serious question? Did anyone know what these things were? Yes. Okay, so these are famous. Yeah, they're from the Rayman series. Oh, see, I don't they play were, the Rayman See, it was introduced series. originally as Rayman's Raving Rabbits, where it was like a rail shooter, and he had to shoot him with plungers. Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. And then Rayman was taken out of that, and it was just called Raving Rabbits. Mm-hmm. And then now it's uh, Ra- Mario... So Rabbit's it's Mario Kingdom and Battle. Rabbit's Kingdom 
Kingdom yeah, battle. That's and what it's I, th- I think what they've done is they've gone up to Mega Man, beaten the shit out that of was, him. That and was stolen, my favorite, by the way. Stolen his gun. Oh my god, it's. Oh. <laughs> this is so good. The, um. Uh. I wanted. I really like. I I wanted one person in the Did audience. I have a championship belt. I wanted one person in the audience just to scream out, "This sucks!" <laughs> just to show one shred of individuality. This, this killed me. That being said, maybe this game is great. It but t- it's it's Mario plus the rabbits from Raving Rabbits in an XCOM inspired tactic. That's kind of what I like about it. It's like it's like it makes. Like it makes uh, it's just like, such a weird. Also, who who are you controlling here? Are you controlling the, the whole Roomba? group? I think it's you're like controlling a snake. the Roomba or you Mario. The Roomba. It's it's like yeah. There's like just look. There's like a little this you, thing. I, th- I think you're controlling the Roomba. Okay. Uh, it kind of does. It you know what? It pretty much is a Roomba. Yeah. Uh oh man, it's funny because she's not Peach. She's a rabbit. The uh, so rabid. this is this was. This was passable, even though it's not my favorite thing. Like, it looks interesting, and I'm sure if you're into well, Rayman side is, characters... This is the way I look at it. If you Rayman want... Rayman side characters, fuck you for even associating them with Rayman. What, you just told me they were from Rayman? Yeah, they got taken out of the franchise. Or rather, the franchise of... Like, it was like that moment... Yeah, fuck clearly. you, Rory. <laughs> not knowing that obscure thing that happened. <laughs> it, my, the, my takeaway from this is, if you're a Nintendo fan and you want a high-definition Mario game... Here you go. That's also... Isn't it turn-based or something? Yeah. yeah. Well, Sweet. The combat is turn-based. It's going to be funny. I, it could also, be amazing. Uh, the first Mario game that looks like it doesn't take place in the Mushroom Kingdom, even though it's in the Mushroom Kingdom, so there we go. The, uh, oh, man, X-Con. look at this. Uh, it's XCOM. Like, I, I remember typing, I was like, what? Is. who the fuck? Who at Ubisoft or Nintendo was like, you know what? I love XCOM, <laughs> but you know what the game is lacking? Annoying rabbits and Mario. Let's get call up Nintendo. I tell them I got a pitch for them. The uh, I think this is the, you know what this might be amazing. This might be the best thing that's been done in a long time. The uh, are you serious? It, uh, it potentially, and it also might be potentially the world's most unnecessary genre blend. Uh, so I'm gonna lean heavily towards the latter. The, uh, if I'm being honest, it's got perk trees and oh, upgrade- oh, upgradable weapons. I kind of, you know what? I'm starting to dig it. Like we're talking shit, but I'm starting to, I'm starting to, to. It what's might this not be all. Is this coming up for anything I'd want to purchase it for? Anthem. Uh, Rory shits on <laughs> Anthem for like 20 minutes. <laughs> this, this game he's into. I would it's, like it's to like think... Yeah. What the, the fuck happened to you, the, uh, I don't know if they announced the platforms. I feel like this is a Switch game, but maybe it's on other stuff. So... It'll be know. the first Mario game released for not a... Like, look yeah, at that's what I was like, wondering. Like, is so a Mario much, game on Xbox? We're going so? to make so much money off of this, eh? Those stupid Americans will buy anything. <laughs> The, uh, anyway, we should power through this now because okay. we're yeah. We, yeah are, we got other Ubisoft. Yeah, uh, we got. Um, this is always going to be a long. We got some podcast. Just Dance. Yeah, well, we can't go over two hours because that camera can only hold two hours. We got some Just Dance. Yeah, right. Uh, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about Just Dance. No, we didn't get Jason Derulo. Yeah, that was I said we're all missed. We're all missing out. Oh, BB Reg is like a lot better than Jason Derulo, but still. Yeah, we got the crew too. Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm okay, hitting my yeah. mic. Okay, this Let's actually looks good. Yeah, this is my. The, it was this Wolf. Wolfenstein was my favorite Bethesda game. Shadow Mortar was my favorite Xbox game. This was my favorite game from the Ubisoft conference, even though this was also in the Xbox conference. Like, this, is- this was this this. If this isn't broken. <laughs> It'll be good. Uh, <laughs> it looks fun. It looks like it borrows a lot from Wildlands, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes some of those like features, you know, like the, your bird is essentially your drone. Where yeah, you can a go Far Cry recon thing as well. Yeah, and, and uh, just some of like the upgrade trees and the different sort of RPG elements. It also looks elements. good for an Assassin's Creed game. Also, can we just take a note here? If you're watching this footage, you'll see that his um, the thing on his back moved the fabric that was hanging down. Uh, from the ceiling, which I thought was really cool, until later on when he jumps on like a fabric surface, and it might as well have been made of concrete. Uh, I just think that's a peculiar. What? Yeah. What move? Uh, what are you talking like, about? Like, so the spear. like his, his, the spear sticking out his back. There was fabric hanging down from like the ceiling. Oh, and, and he it rode moved by it? it, and it moved it, which oh, is okay. great. Until later on in this trailer, he actually jump up, jumps on like a fabric ceiling. Uh, as a way to like get oh, on something yeah. else, and it doesn't move at all. <laughs> uh, and I, yeah. I just think that's peculiar. Um, I also want to point out, I'm really digging this setting because I can't think too. of another game that takes place in ancient Egypt. Please, and I'm not talking about like 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 Tomb Raider or anything like that, which takes place in ancient Egypt ruins. Hmm. Ancient Egypt. 
yeah. in the actual time. I cannot think of another game that does that. Yeah, I like that it kind of takes maybe some liberties as well. Like, it, I mean, kind of late a little bit later in the in the demo here, he steers the arrow when he shoots it. Yeah, and that's almost it's almost like told from legend. You know, like yeah, he he was able to steer the arrow, like you know that kind of. There's also almost, a giant snake, a snack. Yeah, yeah, and and big snoot, a big old snack at the end there. Uh, I love the internet. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's like uh, maybe like a sword it maybe too. doesn't work because the idea of Elder Scrolls is that or not Elder Scrolls uh, the idea of Assassin's Creed is that you're living someone's memories, but it, I don't know. It does seem like it's being told like told. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe it's all reality. You can also have missed. You can uh, you. Uh, you can, as a franchise, just introduce mysticism. Yeah. I feel like sometimes as like an element, and be like, "Hey, there's yeah. all of a sudden mysticism in this." I would be totally okay. Oh, he's totally with... high. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Better be careful here. It doesn't hide at all. <laughs> uh, I would be totally okay if they got rid of the the future stuff. Yeah, me they, too. After Desmond a- a- exited the series, it just got stupid. So, yeah, so I, I think we're all it. looking forward to this game. This game, this I looks cool. to be just Assassin's Creed, but like it's the first Assassin's Creed since. Uh well since uh, since revolution that's really gotten me excited. I mean I think you'd have to be a fucking loon to pre-order it. But, yes. Uh, yeah. Don't that, don't pre-order it. Like uh, uh, so the crew two's coming out. So, yes. Uh, this looks good. I don't know anything about the crew. I just yeah. thought this looked cool. I'm not into racing games really much, so I'll probably won't give this a skip. This oh is, I won't buy it. I just think it yeah. looks cool. Yeah. This is something. At least going in the right direction, I think at rejuvenating racing games. Mm-hmm. In that, uh, with this game, not only can you drive cars and trucks and bikes, but you can drive boats and you can fly planes, and so it opens up that sort of maybe the the motorsport to racing as a whole, anything with an engine, I guess. Um, and so I like that. I think these games, these big open world motorsport games, need to go in a fresher direction than this but I, at least I think this is an attempt yeah and so this is maybe like I was trying to do it looks like it's trying to be Ford also just Horizons. point out here oh, that this is uh, the GT3 RS which is silver also and looks exactly like the GT2 RS we saw earlier well I mean the, they're basically the same car yeah. except the GT3 is basically, a bit better yeah. GT2 is faster GT3 is uh, more of a accessible track car uh, but it looks it looks okay. I, I would love for these games to. What I want essentially is Forza Motorsport. Oh, is that the cockpit view? No, no, it's got an interior view. Okay, good. Oh, that, that guy's totally dead. Um, <laughs> Here's your drink. <laughs> I don't know if they show it or not. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, what I would love for these games, developers, I know you're watching, is Forza Motorsport and GTA. Like, let me walk around, let me do stuff in the city, but have cars be the focus. So almost like Tony Hawk Underground, but with cars. Actually, yeah, but like, yes. Let me, let me earn money for funding my races in other means other than racing. Cooking, mom. You know what I mean? Like, let me get a job if I want. Like, even if it's just a boring job. Let me do everything. Wait, what are you talking about? You want to work at the post office in this video sure, game Sure, man. Sure. Like, if I can, I can make it, I can make a Ubisoft living. don't listen to I can, I can fund my racing career at the beginning by getting a job doing something unrelated to cars. Oh, maybe Ubisoft I can don't do. Ha- oh, you know what? They could really yeah. restructure the like I, our wow. our modern day idea of the economy. If to do that, you can earn money by working for Ubisoft. That, that's what like, I think. I, we I could don't. Really, well, it's like, kind of like what Assassin's Creed. So does this, like, is this like? Is this what the? Okay, I'm like, is it be cool if like the whole city was like like took place in Inception? Is it the whole city was folded in on itself like a big crossover? Well, I don't know how this works. Like because they said when you change discipline, like you just went from a car to a plane to a boat or whatever. The city folds. I don't know why it does that. Why can't I just be like get out? Inception. Let me get out of my car. Inception. Walk to the pier. Get in my boat. Inception. And Aaron. then drive. Inception. Anyway, uh, moving along from that. Looks um, okay, I suppose. It's already not. We got uh, Far Cry Five, which I mean, it's what what is with every like? It seems like every year there's a new trend with video games. This year it's redneck. Stop talking. Ultra guy. ultra conservative redneck Southern Christian cults. Because <laughs> we got you know Resident Evil, we got Outlast two, and we got this. Um. So yeah. 
Uh, I mean, this looks res. just like another Far Cry game to me. More exciting in terms of, of plot than the than than and setting than the other one because I think this is very interesting. A lot of people are already calling like racist on it and stuff like racist against yeah, white we people did a, and Christianity. Yeah, we mentioned that uh, last time. Yeah, which yeah. is it's it's obviously like ridiculous. <laughs> we're not. Yeah, we're it looks not. fun. I'm. I still for some reason uh, Far Cry just doesn't interest me. I don't know. What I it is. I'll be I am the- done. I am officially done with Far Cry. I'll see how it's like. If, if it's nothing new, then I probably won't get it, or I'll only get it when I like. I'll get it when it like. I'm gonna get Far Cry Four eventually. I'm just gonna wait till it's like ten bucks. That's yeah. my. I have. I, I Far Cry Four was my last Far Cry game. Anyway, so probably not. We've already kind of talked about this, so we probably don't yeah. need okay. to. Yeah. Yep. So, You're a white guy, probably, and you shoot other white people. And uh, do you want to talk about the, was it uh, skulls and bones or whatever? Skull and bones gameplay. So this is remember the pirate stuff in Black Flag. Yep. Is that the game? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's like a, much. it's like a five v five multiplayer game where everybody gets their own boat and you I, I assume you blow I, the I shit. think it is it multiplayer only. It didn't show any single player. I think I I don't I think I think they might have said there was like solo experiences. Oh, that's a lot of sale. I really yeah. hope like I would love like the old the old Sea Dogs games and even the the pirates part of. Uh, Black Flag. I love the idea of that, and that's kind of why I want to go back and play Black it, Flag. The Pirates part of Black Flag was excellent. See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This game, the Black Flag, takes a pirate game and adds another experience to it, where like yeah. you can you can go to shore and you can walk around, and there's narrative and characters and all this kind of collectibles and stuff and stuff that you can do on land. Mm-hmm. That's what I want for car games. Right, I Let, see, oh, give me stuff to saying. do yeah, yeah. outside of the. I think you mean you want like a life sim where you can like, go around well, like yeah, apply I mean, for jobs. And I just I don't know what else you would. I just don't know what else you would do. You know, like what do you do right, in a yeah, real yeah. world setting? Like the idea of Aaron being like a pirate, like ah, yar, 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 and he gets off a ship, he goes in his like Formula One car. Like, <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Anyway, it, it's cool. I, yeah, it fun. yeah, it's, it's, it looks it's cool. fine. I probably I won't, won't buy it. Yeah, I won't buy it either. Yeah. I'm gonna buy so few games from this conference. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy the shit out of those. Yes, I agree. Uh, what else? Okay, so we got. Uh, I think that's Beyond Good. Uh, or Beyond Good and Evil Two. Yeah, there's a few that, other things we had. Uh, South Park Fractured the Whole. Oh um, yes. Transference with Elijah Wood for some reason. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is. So, it's a VR horror game. Well, well I, oh, I won't be touching it at Starlink, all. Starlink: Battle for Atlas, which looks just like No Man's Sky, mm-hmm. except you get little collectibles. It kind of does. Sure. Oh man! Um, uh, and uh, the steep DLC, which was the 2018 Olympics. So if you want to fuck around in Pyongyang or wherever the Olympics are next oh, time, man, yay. Uh, then you get to do that. Uh, what was I looking up beyond? Beyond Good and Evil Two. So and this. Evil Two. So this is my favorite thing from Ubisoft press really? conference. Yeah, it looks great. And like Beyond Good and Evil, like finally getting a sequel. Uh, I've never played the first one. I really want to. The uh, they can lend it to me. Like, <laughs> for console, I have. <laughs> it's Ubisoft Montpellier, and uh, the the interesting thing about that studio is if you look them up on, uh, what? Montpellier. Is that a, a, a uh-huh. gyoza? Uh, gyoza? Gyoza? Is that what he was eating? Yeah, Goza. Uh, so goza? The, I believe it's Goza. If you look up the studio on Wikipedia, you're going to be like, oh man, these guys, like they made this and that. They didn't make a lot of those games that they're listed on. They were just small contributors helping like Ubisoft Montreal or whoever. Mm. So you'll be like, oh, they made Unity or whatever. Nah, they helped out a bit. Uh, did, did, what, were the people working on this, though, the people who made the first one? Uh, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. Because uh, the guy who came I out was so. all like getting teary eyed and stuff, and yeah. I'm like, well, I feel like there's that's... been supposed to be one of these for ages. Yeah, right? it's been like 15 years or something like that. He said, and, and and like that whole time they were saying there would be a second one. Uh, yeah, and there clearly has not until now. Can I can I point something out just about the Rayman raving rabbits thing, just for a brief second? It was the only thing about that announcement I like when Shigeru, when Shigeru Miyamoto came out. And he was talking about it. He was talking about how this game, like, it's a good partnership between them. And he said, I've never worked with, like, such talented Western developers who really had a passion for a game. And it showed the creative head of the game, of, of that game, the Ra- Mario Rabbits or whatever. And we were ragging on it. But he started to cry from that praise. Like, it was a really touching moment for me. I was like, wow, he actually, like, that's really big praise. You know, yeah. imagine you're, uh, like, presumably his idol, one of his idols. 
you know, coming out and saying, like, you're a good developer. Like, that must have been, mm. you know? So I didn't want this point that I was being, like, probably my favorite moment for me from uh, from this uh, yeah. E3. I do want to answer your question, Aaron. Yes, it is the same people, and, of course, they also do Rayman. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm all for this. I'm signing up for this. I'm super happy they finally made a sequel. And, again, it got a big spotlight. But, yeah. like, it's not like Beyond Good and Evil is, like, one of their actively most selling games. No. Like, not, yeah. a lot of, not a lot of people are still buying Beyond Good and Evil, let's face it. It's old. I want them to re-release it so everybody can play, because I don't think a lot of people who... They probably will. Yeah. Because I've never played it. Get I it really Steam. want to. Probably will get it on Steam. Is the, it on Steam? Uh, yeah, it is on Steam. Oh, yeah. sweet. I'll probably pick it up there. Yeah, uh, it's, it doesn't really seem like my thing, but it looks interesting. And it's, like, zero dollars, so. because it's, <laughs> it came out in, like, 2003. Yeah. Um... Oh, maybe we could we could just pull it up and have a gander here. Uh, actually, yeah, we could actually just to verify and see exactly how much it costs. And oh man, Colonial Survival. It's ten dollars currently. Ten dollars. Okay. So there wait until the summer sale in uh, mm, about look a at all week's graphics. time. Yeah, about a week's time. I'd and say for uh, the picked sale, this up yeah. for like zero cents. Yeah, exactly. So that's it's cool that they're doing that. Mm. I, man, I dig Roy it. owns it. And uh, moving on to to we, we probably got to clip along here. Moving on to Sony. Yeah. Moving on to Sony. So uh, we got, uh, what did we get from Sony? From by Sony? far, my favorite, or well, not by far, but my favorite conference. It was so, so this is interesting because Sony's placement is often the same. They go after a lot of other people. And I swear there's got to be some guy at Sony that dynamically updates their presentation structure because they always seem to do it in response to everyone else's presentation. And it always works. What did well, the, recently. What do they got at every conference now? They got people come out and playing, like, like crockery. The, uh, <laughs> like they got uh, buskers. Like they, hey, you guys, can you guys play Middle Eastern music? Yeah, well, we're just playing here in the subway. So why don't you go to E3 with me? Like, when Microsoft did that, like, horrendous, like, Xbox thing a few years back, and Sony's conference, it was almost word for word in response to Microsoft's conference. Yeah. And this conference, I felt like, hey, what are the other conferences? Conferences have that we don't want. Well, well, lots of corporate bullshit, and this conference has so minimal corporate bullshit. Yeah. It's excellent. Yeah, it was basically just trailer after trailer after trailer, and then like the main guy came out and he was like, "Sweet," and he's a great speaker. But he's by far the yeah. best. Order yeah, he was that good. Does he was E3. good. He's like, "Sorry for having a talk. Here's some more games." Yeah, he's like, <laughs> they've had him a couple years now, and he's yeah, yeah, he's one of the better presenters of this whole operation. He's way better than Andrew House. The uh, hello, I'm Andrew House. The- <laughs> Um, uh, a lot of these trailers looked interesting. I will buy very few of the games, um, but they did look interesting. I'm interested yeah. in this, man. Yeah, you get Uncharted Lost Legacy. Yeah, this I'm, is I'm cool. getting this. Yeah, and I think this is, like, the fact that this is the first thing they're showing, I think also is maybe, um, very progressive. You have, like, an Egyptian woman and a black woman mm-hmm. are, like, the main, the two main characters in a big budget Sony game, and it's the first thing being shown. It's just like, yeah, and I hope that's they do progressive. a job. Yeah. That's the, progressive. Um, I love stuff and like this. And if, if people, uh, can I just touch on this quickly? Because a lot of people wonder why stuff, uh, certain things are done in like film, especially when people see like uh, film being made, like more films being made with female leads and stuff like that. A lot of people wonder why stuff being done, and some people are critical of them saying, "Oh, well, they just do it." to have a female lead even if that is true that's a that's still okay it's it's important when there's audiences out there that not that films are not being made for to make films and make products for those audiences yeah it sucks i'm sure to be a member of like an audience and a, a demographic that no one's making films with those people in mind you know muslims. Uh, like sorry muslims the uh are, sure yeah exactly i can think of one character yeah one character in pop fiction, Western pop fiction, who is a Muslim, and that is the current Miss Marvel. Right. In, yes. From yeah, Marvel it, Comics. The uh, and so it's it's cool when like the C, what the CW is doing with TV and making like teen drama shows. Oh, yeah. Also worth noting like, that the second game they show has this f- female lead as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like this, it's good to make stuff for anyway, people right, that previously. We don't haven't. Have, <laughs> I get I get what you're saying, but we gotta we gotta I wanna talk about everything so we, like Uncharted looks I'm good, excited for this. And I'm excited for this as well. I, need to I didn't know it existed and before this. So this is this so. is so this is gonna so is this gonna be a game about what's on top of that mountain in, in, in all the set pieces of the game? Uh I mean I guess. I don't think there's you know, it's not really spoilers. I don't think there, there's really many an- answers or questions for them to answer. So I mean this is I mean there are. But the game ties it up nicely in its own narrative. So are there new machines? Uh, I mean, 
There are machines that aren't in the first game or the base game. Um, so probably. Okay. Uh, there's like a thunder jaw there. Yeah. So like, I, I guess you know this kind of expands. I would assume on the first uh, on the base game because she's actually wearing the armor that you get towards the end of the game there. So I would assume I saw this. I was like, good. It's not story DLC where I need to go back and play through the game in order to make you know to do the DLC. It takes place afterwards. And so I guess it'll expand on the narrative of certain elements that they kind of left a little open. Um, I would assume they were going to do that for the next game, and it kind of makes me wonder that they're probably going to ask a few more questions that they didn't really bring up in the in the base game for this and then touch on those in the next game. But I'm really excited for that. It looks It's awesome. That game is awesome. Yeah. This. I am so excited for this game. If... If what this trailer promises is actually how the game plays, I am very excited because this game has a mechanic that I've never seen implemented before, which is where you use the zombies as a tool to fight people rather than the zombies being an, an inherent enemy themselves, which they are. But there's there's many times in this where he like uses like noise bangers or he gets people like his enemies to make noise. And instead of fighting them directly, he fucks off and then a horde of zombies comes and mobs the enemies and kills them that way. That's um, cool, yeah. Which... I would almost be interested to see if they use that as a mechanic where, like, the more times you use that, which is the easy way out of most situations, it adds to the number of zombies on the map. You know what I mean? That you gotta worry about? It increases the density of zombies yeah. when you're traveling around. That'd be interesting. Um, but I'm really excited for this game. It looks it looks good. It looks like it's gonna have kind of like a Last of Us storyline where he's kind of like a like a drifter. You know what I mean? Like a, Or like a, like a person yeah. like, I've given up on being, you know, being yeah. a nice guy. And he kind of, like, comes around like it's a redemption story. Um, zombie animals too. Very, there's not very often in games, especially like this, where the zombie plague is spread to animals. It's mostly like, uh, you know, Resident Evil had that as well, but that's really the only one. Mo in most games, it's only humans. Like Last of Us, it's only humans, um, who are uh, who are zombies. In uh, Left 4 Dead, it's only humans that are zombies. You know, hmm. so I find that very interesting. But you know, it looks fun. I'm. I'm sure. I wonder, like, what the gameplay is actually going to feel like, because it looks to me just to be like another um, uh, Last of Us, which is fine because that game was amazing. He suffocated real quick. Yeah, he did. There's also going to be another Last of Us. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention that as well. Yeah, which they didn't. Show they didn't at show all. anything from that, which which I was very disappointed by. Probably the biggest disappointment at E3, uh, aside from the new Yoshi game, which we'll probably get into next week. Uh, moving along from this, uh, we ha well, I mean, we don't have time. Uh, we really don't. I mean, we can. They Destiny Two. There's nothing really to show for that. We no, have, they, they uh, announced they announced everything with Destiny Two a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and what else was it? We got uh, the Spider Man was at the end. Yeah, Spider Man. Spider Man uh, was great. So yeah, Spider Man looks good. I'm it's hoping Insomniac games. They're excellent. I'm yeah. hoping it's not quick time event the game, which the trailer kind of made it seem to be. I, mean, I, I, I think that just for the plane though, the combat looks very. Yeah. 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 I like the idea of a cinematic game because obviously I would assume this is the first in. Marvel's game cinema, game universe. Uh, so going a very cinematic approach, I think, works. Quick time, maybe. I mean, you can be neither here nor there with quick time, but the physical gameplay itself looked fun in between the quick time stuff. So uh, there was uh, Final Fantasy VR fishing, which mm. looks like the stupidest thing ever. Um, I'm talking about that. When was uh, Marvel Capcom? What conference was that in? That was this one. I, think I don't so, know. Yeah. yeah, I think it was. I this didn't one. write that it down because awful. who cares? Yeah, it, it looked very uh, dumb. Monster Hunter World, which nobody I've ever talked to is, is excited about. I'm sure the Monster Hunter fans are excited for that one, but yeah, can't be bothered. Um, the other game I'm really excited for is God of War, which I never ever thought I would is a sentence I would ever say without sarcasm. Um, yeah, that looked pretty good. It's, uh, I don't know, I like the idea of, it's kind of like The Last of Us where it's a redemption, but it's more like father and son story of, like, a father, like, c coming to understand what his son is and, like, being, like, growing that relationship. Like, that's a really interesting, because before Kratos didn't have a character, his character was, I hate everything, kill, kill, kill. Um, yeah. Because I was tricked, kind of, into killing my own... My only sort of reservation is, I feel like I have to play the other games before this one. Yeah. And so that's. I don't think you do. I know, I also but agree. I I still I'm like. I would read the wiki. Also, uh, if I'm gonna play this, I want to get invested. Mm. So I, I can't do it without playing the other oh, ones. Also, they had Yorma Gander in the trailer. Who's Who? awesome? Yorma Gander. My Megander. 
the the world serpent. He's the big snake oh. dude at the end. Um, yeah, like the, uh, pretty sure Andrew was talking about that from the first. I guess it was last E three. That was my. That was me talking about that. Oh, was it you? Okay, it was me. Because yeah, Andrew, it looks like someone was like, "This looks like a river," but it's actually that was me. The and you and you got fucking uppity with me. Why? What do you mean? Because I was like, "This looks like a river," and you're like, "No, it's like." Oh yeah, because you were because there was an actual body of water in the background, and I thought like, "No, that's water," but you were talking about something else. And yeah. Anyway. Anyway, this looks like it's going to be a fun game. Really, really cool. I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, oh, there's one game we did forget to talk about that I really want to mention. Just South Park Stick of Truth or Stick of Truth uh, Fractured Butthole looks awesome. It. I mentioned it. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. he did. Yeah, uh, briefly. Yeah. The, uh, nice. So, okay, so... We can probably wrap up. We'll talk about yeah. Nintendo next week. Net <laughs> Impressions, basically, is that it was a poorly organized conference yes. that had some highs. Uh, I guess to wrap up, what are, what would you buy from E3? Based I would, on current I would buy this, God of War, uh, Wolfenstein, maybe Metro. I want to see more from that. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, um, uh, Assassin's Creed... Uh, Anthem, probably. Yep. That's, that's basically it. Days Gone. Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2. Forgot about that one. Forza 7 for me. I'm probably going to get Crackdown 3. Not based yeah. on the impressions from the conference, but Certainly just because I want it. The, uh, for, so, yeah, for me, obviously... Life is Strange. Uh, Dishonored, Wolfenstein, uh, Evil Within, Beyond Good and Evil 2, and Assassin's Creed if it's not broken, and... Um, Spider-Man. Yeah, only in yeah. Spider-Man. Probably. I think it was, overall, I think it was a fairly decent showing. It wasn't one of the most, like, legendary, remarkable E3s. But no, it was actually a terrible E3. Yeah. The it, organization of it sucked. Who has a conference was. on the, in, like, in the night time, in, in, like, 5 o'clock on Saturday, and then another conference at 12 on Sunday, and then a five-hour yeah. wait, and then another conference in, in you know, 1 o'clock on, two conferences at the same time. On Monday, the PC and the Ubisoft oh, yeah. conference are basically at the same time, and then another four-hour wait in Sony. Why not have all the conferences? Oh, bam, 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 bam. Quickly, just shout out the PC gaming conference because they got Day Nine back, and he's oh, excellent. They? So sorry, never mind. He might be the best of the presenters <laughs> at E3. Cause you Day would buy is, Day Nine. Uh, uh, Day Nine is just ex- excellent. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much that's pretty that's much it. our wrap up. Uh, I'm sure we'll be referencing the Nintendo bit next week. Um, yeah. We'll probably talk about it further next week. Along yeah, we, with all we, the we, we can we give more, about. but we, you know, we, there was a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah, there was uh, uh, quite a bit. Anyway, we also uh, got this. We'll finish off with this. Elite Dangerous 2.4 got its announcement. Ooh. Oh my! I'm genuinely God. excited for this. I might actually. Did anyone think they were going to stop at 2.3? I know. <laughs> no, but the Thargoids are coming in. So like the long-awaited like. Oh, war. if only Jordan was here. <laughs> for for uh, the un. Initiated, two point four. You're what, initiated. You when I don't know when it where for the people who don't know, when they announced two point or season two of mm. Elite, they told everyone what two point one was, two point two and two point three. Two point four was just a bunch of question marks. Sure. And so, this week through a series of community events, they uh, uh, revealed two point four, which is obviously the Thargoid War, which is why it was a bunch of question marks because they didn't want to say here Thargoids are coming back. You gotta wait until August. Yep. Anyway, so, we need to stop now. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Bye. See. So ya. we'll see you guys next week. Bye.